Ayun, no? Kompleto. Kompleto ang buong ano. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon, teachers. Good afternoon na uh, sa inyong lahat na sa ating uh, and welcome to our uh, Saturday we, uh, ano, no, live stream. Okay. Uh, good afternoon na, uh, Teacher Pao, um, Sir Jambi, and Sir Jello. Good afternoon, Sir Franco, Sir Jello, and Sir Jambi, and to all our kaagapais tuning in. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon. Sa webinar ngayon, Sir Franco. <laughs> Welcome po. Nako. Ah, uh, magmukha magkakalaglagan ngayon ano no, no ngayong ngayong session ano. Pero abangan po natin no. Good afternoon Sir Jello. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon everyone. So, ah, uh, napakagandang opportunity nito to to listen to our speakers katulad. Correct. Kaya nga kaya nandito ako eh. Kasi gusto kong makinig do sa mga powerful speakers natin. <laughs> Oh, uh, balita sa palakasan po eh. Palakasan oh. naman. <laughs> Ayan, na, no? <laughs> yes, no, maraming maraming salamat. Indeed, Sir, Sir Jello, na ka, ano yan, uh, pressure, no? Kasi mukhang malalakas daw yung speakers natin. Malalakas uh, kumain. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, teachers, good afternoon. So let's uh, greet our teachers in the chat. Um, starting as early as 1.33 p.m. Okay. Uh, teacher Lord Lena, um, good afternoon. Uh, teacher um, Jeff Beltran, okay, mainit na hapon. Teacher Evelyn uh, Sonico, Teacher Eloisa Laksamana, Teacher Rose Malen Rosel, okay. Makulimlim, 2 o'clock routine na naman, KTS na yan. Uh, ang ganda ng mga ano ni Miss Rose Malen, ano? Teacher Rika May Dominguez, uh, Teacher um, uh, Rot- Roche Abelia, uh, Teacher Gilbert Bautista, Teacher M.B. Alcagno and Teacher Adrian Neneng. I'll stop with Teacher Edna Despi. Good afternoon po kay Teacher Edna Desmi. Despi, Miss Marisa Gumabong, always with us. Teacher Sharon Hogat, good afternoon. Teacher Raquel Manawis from Pangasinan. Teacher Alan Maglantay from Sultan Kudarat. Teacher Joy Guerra. Teacher Romel Makatiag from SDO Pasay. Teacher Jasper Teacher Ricky Redillas, Teacher Glenda Aloran, Pastor Manny Garcia from Cavite, Teacher Gurley Vergara, and Teacher Angelica de la Cruz. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon din po kay Teacher Christina Antonio, Teacher Gemma Rivera, uh, Teacher, oh, Dean, Teacher Dean Clifford Kwame, Teacher Tedoro Nana Jr., Teacher Nanita Ramos, Teacher Ronaldy Mejo, Teacher May Vice Persona. Ay, hello, hello sa inyo. Teacher Donna Mijares, Teacher Cheryl Mabini, Teacher Ginaline Villar, Teacher Cordelyn Ramirez, Teacher Beverly Joy Quahao, Teacher Vina Mabinod, uh, Teacher Rica May Dominguez, and Teacher Jelen uh, Rigney. Ayan, good afternoon din po kay uh, Teacher Bonnie Anthony Mantog, Teacher Maria Concepcion Gallego, Teacher Marie Bell, Teacher Edril Edrilaika May Verdadejo, Verdadero, sorry, uh, Teacher Elmar Moralde, Teacher Christine Mozo, Teacher Giovanni Alpuerto, Teacher Evelyn Kahupom, Teacher Maria Gypsy, uh, Des, tama, tama, <laughs> Desti. Deskitado, okay? Teacher Maria Anfe Sumalinog and Teacher Abby Joy Bibal. Yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon po teachers. No? And for the rest, you know, nasa live stream po natin, we're all 95 no, live viewers as of the moment. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. 96 na po, nakaka-96. <laughs> anyway, we are turn po sa ating lahat at welcome to our um, sa afternoon, no, la, Saturday live stream. No? Sabi nga ni Miss... Um, Miss Rose Balen, no? it's our uh, KTS routine na, no? every Saturday. At maraming maraming salamat for being with us. I know it's a siesta time, no? Sir, um, Sir Jambi, Teacher Jello, tsaka Teacher Pao, no? pero nandito po tayong lahat at uh, willing matuto no? at um, pag-usapan muli. Kasi ito ay review, no? basically, 
uh, ng ating EDUC 101. So, dadalhin po namin kayo at ibabalik po namin kayo sa ating EDUC 101. Okay? Not because uh, we, we don't believe that you know this, okay? uh, but because um, ano, no? medyo matagal na rin siya napag-usapan. Okay? Uh, and uh, this, I think, is now very timely no? na pag-usapan ulit. No? Ungkapin ulit kay uh, itong Bloom's taxonomy and Maslow's hierarchy of needs no? in order to contextualize it in the 21st century learning. Tama pa rin ba? Or naka-align pa rin ba ang ating Bloom's taxonomy and uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs in our 21st century educations, most especially in the post-pandemic education. So yan yung pag-uusapan natin para sa araw na ito. Okay. Um, and uh, for this afternoon po, no, we'll be uh, taking on a ano, um, uh, co collaborative presentation. Okay. So we'll have two parts for today. Uh, we'll take on first uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay. Um, Sir Jambi and I know will be uh, discussing this. Okay. And um, right after that, we'll have after our session, we'll already have a um, open forum no on our session. Okay. And then we'll proceed with the session of uh, Teacher Pao and Sir Jello on uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. In the 21st century and uh, just like always, uh, this event no is a certified event. Okay, so you will be receiving a uh, certificate. No plus, just make sure that we accomplish the form correctly, so that uh, ano po tayo no, uh, mapadala po talaga namin ng maayos ang inyong uh, certificates. Kay uh, tama ang email at tama din ang pangalan sa inyong mga forms. And after that, no give us five to seven days to send your certificates. Okay. Um, Teacher Pao, um, Sir Jello, Sir Jambi, um, any other reminders for our teachers or um, precautions? <laughs> precautions. May pagbabanta ba? Hindi. <laughs> Actually, sabi ko nga kanina kay, ano, kay Sir Franco, ibang level college reporting yung dating nitong ating, ano, no? <laughs> nitong ating webinar ngayon. Because I'm sure you really heard of it, no? Bloom's taxonomy and Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Kung nagtuturo ka, siguradong sigurado ko na encounter mo sila at na meet mo silang dalawa. No, ang tanong is, nakatulong ba sila sa inyo? At kung hindi pa, paano sila makakatulong sa inyo? Now that you're actually in the field. Baka yun yung pwedeng um, mindset natin today. Eh, ako naman, Sir Franco, una, okay na ba yung audio ko? Okay na. Okay na. Ayan. Uh, ako naman ang naisip ko since nga kanina pa natin ine-establish na this is something na we're 100% sure alam na ng mga ano natin, ng mga kaagapay natin. Uh, siguro ano lang, uh, it's it's a nice chance for us to talk about it again, to discuss kung uh, I'm sure iba-iba tayo ng ano, iba-iba tayo ng mga perspectives. Kung maga pare-pareho tayo ng intindi pero may kanya-kanya tayong perspectives given our various experiences and situations. So maganda na maiano yan ngayon na ma malagay natin sa forefront, makapag-share tayo sa sa chat and uh, hopefully after this we become better teachers. It's okay no Sir Jambi no. Yung sinasabi ni Sir Jambi, tama yun no. Magkakaiba tayong perspectives, malamang pagkakaintindi rin no. And it's okay. Uh, at maganda doon is that pag-usapan lang natin. Okay? Uh, yung ano natin. Anyway, uh, Sir Jalo? Mm -hmm. So, agree po ako uh, kay Sir Franco, kay Miss Pao, at kay Sir Jambi. So, magandang balikan at tingnan. Kasi minsan, uh, Sir Franco, Miss Pao, Sir Jambi, minsan kailangan lang ng tignan ulit eh. Para, at minsan sa pagtingin natin sa ikalawang beses, ikatlong beses, o sa maraming beses, meron pa tayong makitang, di ba, na mas pwede natin gamitin or ma-apply ma natin, especially in this uh, current context. And now that we are preparing ng mga, kasi ngayon, isa na mga, sa mga usapan ngayon, Sir Franco, Miss Paul, Sir Jambi, yung mga pagbabalik, di ba, ng mga high flex na ngayon. So paano kaya din natin pwede sila i-contextualize yung Bloom's taxonomy and uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs pagbalik na natin sa classroom, kung ano mang klase, hybrid, high flex, or kung ano man yung magiging uh, setup na na uh, pupuntahan natin this uh, post pandemic hopefully malapit na alam ko malapit na marami na rin mga uh, nagpre-prepare for for that so magandang balikan at magandang tingnan ano pa kaya baka mamaya may mayroon pa tayong makita na ma-apply pa natin at 
mas para mas maging contextual yung uh, pagbabalik natin sa classroom. Correct. No, siyempre iba na yun yung post-pandemic education. Actually, we have an entire session just to talk about post-pandemic education. Pag-uusapan natin yan entirely because that's an entirely different context na rin talaga. No? Okay? So, um, we'll now proceed no, to our first session, uh, first part no, of our session for today, which is on Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Okay? And that will be... Uh, uh, oh, kami dalo, hindi pa. Iba pa yung open forum. <laughs> So now, teachers, now again, we invite everyone to please engage it in the chat. Uh, throw in your questions, your uh, insights in the chat. And just like always, okay, that's actually what uh, makes our community you know, very, very unique. You know, uh, the engagement of our community uh, with each other. Okay? So, Teacher Pao, uh, Sir Jello, we'll see you in a while uh, for your session. Okay, as we uh, And Sir Jambi, you know, proceed with our session for this afternoon. Okay. So, Sir Gabby, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir Franco. Good luck sa atin. <laughs> yeah, good luck talaga sa atin. No? I think um, good luck in a way because we know na alam ng mga teachers natin to. Okay? Uh, so, what else can yeah. we actually discuss for today and how we're going to engage our teachers no? is going to be our challenge for today. And of course, uh, we're, we're, we'll be on that challenge. Okay? But uh, siguro disclaimer lang namin ni Sir Jambi. No? Sabi na nga ni Sir Jambi kanina is that magkakaiba tayo ng perspective, malamang, at uh, context no, or lenses na ginagamit no, in order to understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs no, in the context of education. And we'd like to hear from you, okay? As we share our own, uh, own uh, ideas and thoughts, okay? We'd also like to um, to hear your own ideas and thoughts. And Sir Jambi, while we're, um, pwede pati pag-usapan yung context na yan, no? pero bago yan at habang ito nag-uusapan natin yan, We'd like to invite everyone to do first a check-in. Kasi napakahalaga nito no? uh, for, um, for our social-emotional learning doon sa, sa classroom natin. Nag-check-in tayo. Nito rin, mag-check-in din tayo. And we'd like to invite everyone okay, to um, go in here at uh, our Padlet uh, activity. Okay? At https uh, colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash reimagine check-in. Okay, we will be copying that since medyo mahaba, no? Uh, we'll be copying that in the chat right now for those who has an extra or for those who have an extra no, uh, device. Okay? Yes. You can, no? Um, ayun, okay. Naka-ano na, naka-lagi na tayo. Maraming salamat, uh, Sir Jambi. Okay? So we'll just be waiting for that um, and we'll see, no? Kasi Sir Jambi, interesting yan, Okay? Ah uh, tatlo kasi yung pinag- um yung pwedeng nilang i-post. <laughs> <Just, laughs> yeah. it's actually either no any, hindi naman kailangan lahat. Okay? So pwede kayong pumili lang. It's either a selfie, um a picture of your workplace or a picture of your scenery. Actually excited ako doon sa scenery no. Uh, kasi alam ko marami tayong mga co-teachers no or uh, members of the community that are uh, ano no are in in beautiful places. Okay? So ano kaya yung nakikita nila? sa labas ng window nila. Baka may makita tayo nasa Boracay pa lang ngayon o kaya nag nasa beach pa lang ngayon o nakakainggit. So, let's get into that. Let's get let's uh, give each each other no a glimpse of where we are right now and who we are no, no um uh, our own places kasi syempre Sir Jambi no ang tagal na rin nating disconnected uh peace ano sa ibang sa maraming tao no okay? And uh, maybe this time uh, we'll get to see each other talaga sa community natin kasi madalas sa chat lang tayo nagkikita-kita. Okay? So, let me uh, get into that. So, Jambi, tingnan natin kung um, ano na ba ang um, nandito sa ating um, um, wala pa. Ay, i-ano ko muna. Refresh ko lang. Okay? Gumagawa ko. Okay? We'll see kung sino na yung mga nakapaglagay. Eh, no? And uh, we'll see. Etsura. Okay? Siyempre, no? Um, Sir, Sir Jello, uh, yun. Okay? Meron na kagad tayong unang uh, entry. No? Okay? Yan. So, di ba, nagkakaroon ng face nun at nakikita ito isa-isa't isa. No? I think na, napakahalaga ganyan lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng, um, ano, no, ng ano, anonymity, Sir Jambi, na yung parang puro thumbnails na nakita natin, pangalan, ayan, nag-selfie na si Sir Jambi. Abangan natin ang entry ni Sir Jambi sa padet natin, okay? Ayan, meron din tayong mga workplace sa syempre. Doon sa workplace nila, ang nakita natin ngayon ay yung ating webinar, no? Syempre, ng kanilang Uh, tinitingnan ngayon. Okay, pero yung isa, no? uh, naka-webinar, pero at the same time, mayroong ano, mayroong pang kasabay na trabaho. Okay? So, well, be, ano, no? uh, kudos to that. No? Gumagawa po ng lesson plan habang nag-webinar. Okay. 
Napakaganda naman ang selfie nito niya. Si Miss May ba to? I think this is Miss May, no? Miss May versus Osa, ano? Okay? So, yan. Scenery kaya. Wala pa tayong nakikitang scenery, no? Yan. Um, meron po. May pinost po na link si Sir Jambi. Okay? Um, ano lang ulit natin? Okay. Um, I-show ko lang po dito ulit. Okay? So, for those who would like to um, uh, do the check-in, no? Uh, HTTPS. Uh, colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash reimagine check in no? sir so sir jambi no while our teachers are um are are <laughs> uh, taking their selfies and taking photos of their workplaces no at saka scenery sana may makita tayong scenery no or uh, ano ba yung nasa labas ng window nila ngayon okay um at haba nag selfie din sir jambi no syempre ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon okay would be maslow's hierarchy of needs at it's actually to tong check in natin ay in connection to that then no? yung ab uh, yung ability or yung um, opportunity to belong to to feel that you belong to a community or to a group is actually one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs ayan may nakita tayong isang ha ano um scenery parang lawak naman dito oo totoo yan ganda naman diyan oo ang lawak no <laughs> ang lawak ng scenery ni ano ni Ma'am or Sir ba to okay so yan ang dami na rin mga workplaces Wow, lush ano, very lush and green no, Kim. So yan, kay teachers, please do continue. Ah, uh, tuloy lang po natin ang paglalagay, Kim, ng um, mga ano no, ng mga uh, um pictures natin ng ating selfies, Kim, ng ating um uh, ano no, um photos no sa ating check-in uh, padlet no, para lang makita natin yung isa't isa and we also get to share our uh, ourselves no vir even virtually, no? okay? So now let's uh, while you're at it po no at maraming maraming salamat sa mga nak, uh, nag nag ano nag um, nag join okay at nagpadala ng kanilang mga check-in photos okay sa ating Padlet activity. I'll keep it there no Sir Jambi um para makapag-post pa rin yung mga teachers natin ng photos no um even um right after siguro we'll keep it at uh, 5 10 more minutes okay um into our screen para po makita niyo okay. While you're at it cheers teachers will now proceed to our session. Now, we'll start with um, Sir Jambi's session okay, on exactly what is okay, um, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, ito po yung magiging flow natin. We'll be talking about first what is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We'll just review it. Okay? And then, we'll uh, talk about how does uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs affect education. And of course, we'll try to contextualize it in the 21st century. And we'll have an open forum no, uh, right after our session. Okay? All right. Maraming maraming salamat Sir Franco. Uh, gaya ng sinabi ni Sir Franco, ang first part po natin ay ano lang, uh, review lang talaga. Uh, kaya naman sa bandang dulo ng aking presentation, nagdagdag ako ng mga insights, mga uh, reflections ko about uh, when I was also reviewing yung Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Medyo matagal-tagal na rin kasi when uh, I had my education units. So Ang request ko siguro, ang uh, suggestion ko sa ating mga kaagapay, habang sabay-sabay natin na nire-review yung uh, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, kung meron din kayong biglang mga insights, realizations, mga bagong ideas na pumasok, share nyo lang po sa ating, ano, sa ating uh, comment section. And when you see others' comments na gustuhan mo or may iba ka pang idea, sige lang, magtalaktakan po tayo. Okay? Magtalakayan po tayo. Okay. Ayan. Uh, Siyempre, kailangan makilala muna natin kung sino ba si Maslow. Ang kompletong pangalan niya ay Abraham Maslow. Uh, kanina ko pa pinagtataka. Yung, mga, yung picture ni Abraham Maslow, Sir Franco, Miss Pao, and ano, Sir Jello, masayang-masaya siya. Okay? So, I could just imagine kung uh, di kaya na, ano, na fulfill ni Abraham Maslow hanggang sa tuktok ng kanyang hierarchy of needs. Okay? Kasi nga sobrang saya niya sa kanyang photo. So, uh, papasalamat tayo kay Abraham Maslow. He is, ah, sige, i-next slide na muna natin. Uh, he is a psychologist, of course. Uh, isa siya dun sa mga kinoconsider natin na humanistic psychologists. And uh, sa kanyang pag-aaral, he developed the hierarchy of needs. Uh, in most 
uh, sources that I saw, ang sinasabi nila, ang paliwanag nila sa Maslow's hierarchy of needs ay um, to fill the need to explain human behavior. Okay? Tapos, um, ewan ko, ako, I, I found it medyo difficult to to understand or connect it sa pagiging guru ko o sa sa education kaya i like this uh one explanation that i saw that changed the word behavior instead to motivation uh, and then now it's closely connected to ano to to us being teachers biglang ay okay so dapat pala maintindihan ko ito para ma-motivate ko ng tama yung aking mga estudyante or ma- maipaliwanag ko sa sarili ko why my students are not motivated. Okay? Next po. So, yung theory nga niya, ni uh, Abraham Maslow suggests that people have a number of basic needs that must be met before they move up the hierarchy to pursue more social, emotional, and self-actualizing needs. Ayan. Um, bigay ko lang muna yung definition na yan. I have a, a, another insight towards the end of our presentation. Sige po, next po. Ayan, okay. So, ito, alam na alam na ng lahat. Okay? Feeling ko, if, if we had asked you to uh, draw from memory yung Maslow's hierarchy of needs, kayang-kaya ninyong gawin. I actually chose what I feel was the simplest a representation of the pyramid. So, sa pinaka-bottom po natin, yung physiological needs, and uh, alam naman po natin how pyramids work, nasa bottom ka nga, but mas marami, di ba? Mas malaki, mas, uh, mas marami yung kailangang uh, punan muna. And then, higher up the pyramid, we have safety needs, and then love and belonging. Tapos, further up would be esteem and da sa pinakadulo, self-actualization. Isa-isahin natin yung mga yan. Next po. Okay. Physiological needs. Okay. Mga pangangailangan ng ating katawan muna. Uh, kailangan muna natin mabuhay before we actually uh, think of the other uh, levels in the pyramid. So, nandyan yung pagkain. Nandiyan yung tubig, di ba? Without uh, which, ano, mamamatay din tayo. Nandiyan yung, kanina rest lang yan. Kaya kung napansin niyo capital pa yung R, di ba? Kanina rest lang yan, but apparently, hindi lang enough yung rest. Dapat sufficient rest. Okay? Dapat enough na rest. And that is a physiological need. Very, very basic. And then we have clothing and shelter. Ayan, kaya you could just imagine yung mga uh, kababayan natin na walang masuot o walang matirahan, how very demotivated they must be to live their lives, to make uh, something better out of themselves. And then, overall health. Okay? It is a very, very basic necessity. And then, yes, uh, totoo, reproduction, or in other words, sex, ay isang physiological need. Next, let's move on to the higher levels. Anong susunod sa physiological need, uh, safety needs naman. Ayan, safety or security needs. Kabilang dyan, yung protection from violence. Okay? Yung hindi tayo kakabakaba na anytime may uh, mananakit sa atin or may magnanakaw sa atin. Emotional stability. Ayan. So, apparently, uh, hindi drama. Di ba? Hindi drama ng mga tao if they're emotionally unstable kasi it's a very basic need nasa baba pa siya ng ano nasa baba pa siya ng uh, pyramid so you cannot expect people talaga pala to uh, to function uh, as as well as you expect them to be if they're emotionally unstable okay well-being okay ito yung higher level pa of course ng uh, overall health health security so yung halimbawa yung mga HMO natin o kaya feel health Diba? Malaking, malaking bagay kung merong scandal, for example, that involves feel health kasi it involves everyone else's health security. Kakabaka-baka na pag ako ba nagkasakit, may mapupuntahan ba ako na hospital? Uh, hindi ko ba paproblemahin yung gagastusin sa hospital? 
hindi ba ako mahahawa pag pumunta ako sa hospital and so on and so forth. Very, very basic siya apparently. And ito, um, medyo malakas yung tama nito sa akin, yung financial security. Kasi uh, dati ko pa iniisip na isa ito sa mga malaking pangangailangan ng ating mga teachers yung financial security. I, I'm sure you would agree na parang compared to teachers in other countries, di ba? Uh, hindi gaano kataas ang ating uh, sinesweldo sa Pilipinas. Uh, and yet, ano tayo, uh, very, very generous tayo with our materials, kumbaga, inako na natin bilang mga anak natin talaga yung ating mga estudyante. I'll, I'll have more about this later. Let's move on to the third in the pyramid. Ang susunod sa safety needs would be, yan, love and belonging needs. Friendships, yan, kasama yung friendships. Family bonds. Um, kaya, while it is, um, it's possible for you naman to, to live alone, di ba? Uh, iba pa rin when you have family. Iba pa rin when you're okay with family. So, kung okay ka na without them, imagine pa kung paano if you're with them or if you're okay with them. You have an okay relationship with them. You might be an even better person o oh, kaya mas kampante ka sa sarili mo. Intimacy. Ayan, pag sabi natin intimacy, hindi lang yung physical intimacy. Uh, kasama dyan yung emotional intimacy. Meron ka bang palaging nakakausap? Pagka may problema ka ba? May, naka, may nahihingahan ka ba? Ayan. So, share natin yan mamaya kasi uh, yung, yung insights ko more or less, I, I connected the Maslow's hierarchy of needs to what the Kaagapay Teacher Support does. Okay? For, for, for us, for all of you, for, for everyone. And finally, belonging to a club or group of hobbyists. Ayan. Bukod pa, of course, sa uh, ano natin, sa faculty association. So, lalo na itong panahon ng pandemia, uh, siguro nakakita na kayo sa, ano, sa Facebook. Bukod sa Kaagapay Teacher Support, meron yung, ano, di ba, yung, uh, parang group where people just share about their homes. Di ba? Kung ano yung mga bagong budol daw nila about their homes. Uh, malaking bagay yon actually sa pag-fulfill ng uh, love and belonging needs ng mga tao. Uh, hindi siya, ano lang, hindi siya, uh, hindi, hindi siya wala lang. It's in fact very important the, that people actually do that. Okay? Next. Uh, yung esteem needs, isa na siya doon sa mga tinatawag na higher needs, kumbaga. The, the, the three others are the quote-unquote lower needs. Ito na yung quote-unquote higher needs. Uh, hatiin natin sa dalawa, yung self-respect and yung self-esteem. Okay? Uh, dito sa esteem needs, at mahalagang-mahalaga po ito, ha? Uh, self-respect, yan yung how uh, others treat us. Okay? Kung, uh, kung may paggalang ba yung mga tao sa atin, kung pinupuri ba tayo ng mga tao, because that actually uh, helps us develop our self-respect. And then, yung self-esteem naman, it, ito naman yung paano natin tignan yung mga sarili natin. Diba? How do we view ourselves? Kung uh, feeling ba natin when we're facing a challenge, kakayanin ba natin? O agad, bumibigay na agad tayo. Okay? So, mahalaga itong pareho that, that people actually um, help us with our esteem needs. Okay? Uh, compliments. Um, pagbati. Okay? Lalo na kung sincere naman. And uh, yung self-esteem, uh, tayo rin, we have to find a way for us to uh, view ourselves as Uh, capable as having great potential. Ayan, marami sa... O, oh, share natin yung sinare ni Teacher Jomar. My professor actually conducted a study and found that the hierarchy is kind of different for Filipinos. Ayan, very interesting. They found that love and belonging needs are more fu fundamental than physical needs. Okay. 
interesting yan. Kasi una, balik tayo kay uh, Maslow. Tandaan natin, si Maslow ay American. Okay? So, automatic, ibang kultura na agad. Si Maslow ay lalaki. ba? Diba? So, automatic, ibang ano na kagad yan. Ibang perspective na kagad yan. <clears throat> Tapos, uh, hindi na, the most definitely, naabutan ni uh, Abraham Maslow yung panahon natin ngayon because he died in the 70s. So, yun yung kanyang konteksto. Ah, ano kaya yung konteksto ng mga Pilipino at paano natin pwedeng gamitin or itweak yung Maslow's hierarchy of needs to our advantage. So marami marami salamat. Totoo yun yung sinabi ni ano kanina na ma- malakas. Siguro not necessarily ka-equal ng air o ng food. Pero napakabigat ng love and belongingness need ng uh, mga Pilipino, ng kultura na katulad ng Pilipinas. Thank you. And then, uh, at the top of the pyramid, we have yung ating self-actualization needs. Okay. Uh, education, o siguro ano to, uh, further education, skills development, naisip ko kanina dito yung ano, yung ating Thursday webinars, di ba? Kasi, kung tutusin, Sir Franco, marami tayong mga teachers na umaten ng skills development or ng skills training seminars natin na um, hindi naman nila agad pangangailangan yung skills na yun. Pero talagang gusto lang nilang bumuti pa yung sarili nila para bumuti pa yung pagiging guru nila sa ating mga estudyante. And then, nandyan yung refining of talents. Ayan. So, hindi lang basta having talents, pero the refinement of our talents. Travel. Ayan. Isa sa mga bagay na uh, hindi natin masyadong nagagawa ngayong panahon ng pandemya, lalo na sa Pilipinas. Pero it's actually one of our needs. Siguro nasa taas, nasa tok-tok na siya, pero need pa rin siya eh. Okay? Hindi siya, hindi na siya considered na, ano, na luho. Okay? It's a need. Okay, kasama yan sa mga needs sa mga tao. And ito, tuwang-tuwa ako dito sa, kasama sa self-actualization needs, yung the fact that we care for others. Nakita ko kanina, may pinag-uusapan sa chat yung uh, don't stop with money. Okay, yung, yung make sure that you use it for a better purpose. Isa yan sa mga magagandang purpose, that you care for others. Diba? That you use your resources, hindi lang money, time, Uh, skills para iparamdam sa ibang tao na tulungan silang to move up in the pyramid. Okay? It's one of our self-actualization needs. Okay. Next book. Okay, I agree. Uh, bigla ako na pabasa sa ating ano. Bigla ako na pabasa sa ating uh, comment section sabi ni Teacher Alan Diaz. Uh, in reality, uh, share ko na lang. In reality, especially nowadays, spirituality is necessary to be included in the self-actualization needs just an opinion. Um, I like how he used spirituality and not religion, okay? Kasi hindi naman true yung religion for everyone, okay? So, totoo yan, totoo yan. And minsan nga, yung spirituality also trickles down to belongingness. Di ba? Yung may mga kasamahan ka na pareho kayo ng pinaniniwalaan, malaking bagay yon Okay. Tuloy lang po muna natin. Next po. Ah, yan. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, again, we have physiological at the very bottom, safety, love and belongingness, esteem, and self-actualization. Now, itong apat na to, yung physiological safety, love, and belonging, at saka esteem. Next slide, please. Ayan. Yan daw yung tinatawag natin na deficiency needs. Gusto ko lang ibahagi itong um, how one article that I read uh, actually um, discussed yung Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Itong apat daw na ito, they're referred to as the deficiency needs. Uh, kasi if hindi mo sila magawa or magkulang ka, it actually affects you negatively. Okay? So, nandyan yung uh, magugutom ka, lalamigin ka, or worse, mamamatay ka. Diba? 
uh, feelings of loneliness, di ba? feelings of self-doubt, yan yung mga mangyayari if hindi mo ma-fulfill yung apat na needs na yan. But, I like uh, yung panglima natin na need. Next slide po. Ayan, yung self-actualization daw ay tinatawag na growth need. Okay? What's nice about a growth need is um, ito positive yung approach na if you're able to do this, then you grow as a person. Okay? Then you become someone who uh, may um, have that opportunity to help other people as well. Okay? Halimbawa, um, yun, travel. Kung hindi ka nakaka-travel, uh, kulang ka na ba bilang tao? Hindi naman, not necessarily. Kung hindi ka ba, kung wala ka bang MA or wala ka bang doctorate, kulang ka na ba as a person? Not necessarily. But all of these experiences, all these opportunities help you grow. Okay? And that's sa sayo na yun how you use that growth. Diba? And hopefully you use that para tumulong sa ibang tao. Okay? Next po. Okay. Uh, I'd like to share some insights, pero tuwang-tuwa ako sa mga sineshare ng mga kaagapay natin sa chat section, sa comment section. Yan na rin yung mga insights niyo At magdagdag pa po kayo, ha? Uh, so, ito po yung sinasabi ko doon sa definition na nakita ko kanina. I, I actually prefer this um, definition. Yung sabi, the needs in the lower levels ought to be addressed first before a person can prioritize higher levels. Uh, kasi, hindi naman ako naniniwala na kung nagugutom ka, hindi ka na pwedeng tumulong sa ibang tao. Okay? Alam natin yan bilang mga Pilipino. Ayan, self-transcendence, achievement of purpose to serve others. Ma? Uh, pwedeng hindi mo pa na na-achieve yung or, or na, na pupunan yung lower level needs mo pero tumutulong ka ng ibang tao nagse-self-actualize ka na to a certain extent so possible yun okay so ito i i actually mean, hindi hindi dapat natin iniisip na ah hangga di mo na pupunan yung physiological hindi ka pwedeng umakyat it's not like that okay siguro it's a matter of prioritization kasi iisip-isipin mo pa rin na oy nagugutom ako okay Pero kung hindi mo na iniisip yung guto mo, hindi mo na iniisip kung may pambayad ka ba sa bill next time, then you have more chances. Okay? Then mas ano ka, mas uh, maganda yung pakiramdam mo about the ones in the higher levels. Okay? Next. Ayan, ito yung mga insights ko. Una doon sa physiological needs, sufficient rest is necessary. So, uh, natutuwa nga ako sa maraming guro na isinasama na, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya sa kanilang uh, sa kanilang mga plano, sa kanilang mga klase. May actual time for health break. O sige, after 20 minutes, ano muna tayo, uh, ice train break, di ba? Let's, let's look somewhere 20 feet apart. Uh, close our uh, focus, try to focus for 20 seconds. Kasi sufficient rest is necessary. Nasa pinaka-bottom siya. So, pati rin sa pagbibigay natin ng mga tasks, uh, I'm sure our teachers iniisip yan na uh, enough ba yung oras ng mga bata sa mga binibigay natin na tasks sa kanila. And hindi lang dapat enough. Kumbaga, o oh, sige, uh, eight hours sila pumapasok kunyari sa school, o sige, meron pa silang uh, 16 hours. Sige, punan natin yung 16 hours na yun. Hindi, kasi teachers nowadays, and I'm happy about this, tinitake into consideration na rin na yung rest. Okay? Kasi kahit tayo naman, di ba, dear teachers, pag uh, napagod tayo sa check-in, or wala nang pumapasok sa isip natin about uh, the strategy that we're going to use in a class, di ba, pahinga lang tayo ng sandali, Diba? Pahinga tayo sa sandali and biglang ano, bigla tayong nare-recharge. Okay? So, uh, kung hindi pa man po, palagi natin i-consider yan. Not just for ourselves, but for others. Uh, mental health is also a basic need. 
Okay? And uh, siguro isa ito sa mga magandang naging resulta ng pinagdadaanan natin ngayon. Uh, nagkaroon ng extra focus on mental health. Sana pagka nagbumalik tayo sa face-to-face, pag uh, balik na tayo sa quote-unquote normal way of living, huwag natin pabayaan yung mental health. Okay? Ang mental health naman, hindi lang siya nangyayari dahil distance learning tayo. Okay? Pwede ka pa rin bang magka-mental health problems kahit face-to-face na? Yes! Okay? So, sana huwag natin pabayaan yan. Thank you. Next. Health security. Yan. Health security, gagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, is very important. Kaya, uh, eto, well, more or less, labas naman tayo dito. Pero, kaya malaking bagay for us kung every time the Department of Health, for example, or uh, PhilHealth is uh, involved, kahit hindi pa man na, na prove in a scandal kasi apektado tayong lahat. Apektado yung ating health security dito. Okay? Financial security is just as, in, as important. Uh, I don't know kung mahahanapan ni Sir Franco ng paraan, pero ito, wish ko talaga magka, magkaroon ng financial security lahat ng guro sa Pilipinas. Ma, maturuan lahat ng Pilipino kung paano mag-save, kung paano mag-invest, how to properly use our money. Kasi, yun, uh, it's unfair. It's just unfair na yung mga taong uh, iginugugol ang lahat ng oras nila, ang buong buhay nila, uh, para sa ibang tao ay walang financial security. Sabi ni Ms. Manolita, before expecting students to reach their potential, teachers need to meet students at their current level. So, ayan, totoo din yan. Um, minsan hindi nga minsan madalas 'di ba we we expect them to self actualize agad-agad 'di ba never asking them kung take a breakfast ka ba na, na, nakatulog ka ba ng ano ng maayos last night kasi yung estudyante mo pala night shift sa trabaho so tanungin din natin sila we might not be able to do something about it agad-agad pero Malaking bagay yung naitanong mo man lang sa kanila. Okay, next. Ayan yung sinabi ko, yung intimacy can come in the form of emotional bonds. Okay, huwag natin i... Uh, pag walang bahala, yung pagkakaroon natin ng mga nakakausap, ng mga nahihingahan. Okay, uh, yung mga nagbi-message kay Sir Franco, ayan, palaging kinikwento sa akin ni Sir Franco. Uh, ikinatutuwa ni Sir Franco and I'm sure kayo rin it also help uh, it also helps you in uh, filling up your ano your love and belongingness needs. Ayan, sabi ko dito, your barkada helps you deal. Ayan, ito very very true. Uh, hindi lang naman ano, ang barkada hindi palaging ano, hindi palaging kasayahan lang, hindi palaging ano negative ang ano negative um, or bad influence, di ba? Um, bakit ba naghahanap ng barkada? Bakit naghahanap ng mga kaibigan ang mga tao? Hindi lang kabataan. Because uh, it's a need. Okay? Malaking bagay for them. Gusto mo yung anak mo na to do well in school, for example, uh, huwag mo naman siyang pagbawalan to have friends or to have time with his friends. Siyempre, ibang usapan yung positive ba or negative yung influence pero yung pagkakaroon lang ng friends wag mong wag niyo iano sa kanila yan wag niyo ipagkait yan sa kanila because he has to fill that need first kayo rin naman di ba teachers may mga barkada tayo sa ano sa faculty area di ba o kaya yung teachers favorite teachers friday pagkatapos lalabas di ba kakain manood ng sine magkakape uh, kasi tayo mismo alam natin na it's a need that we need to fill okay next po Uh, doon tayo sa esteem. Okay? Be generous with your compliments. Okay? Uh, ako, guilty ako nito. Uh, pero apparently, yun nga eh, it's a need. Pero be sincere about it, of course. Kung maganda na rin lang yung ginawa ng isang studyante, why not purihin mo? Okay? 
uh, make sure that he or she knows na maganda yung ginawa niya. Uh, hindi lang because um, para he does better next time, pero it's a need kasi that we have to fill. Okay? And then, give people opportunities to gain confidence. Ayan. Um, ito, alam ko naman lahat ng teachers, at least at the back of their minds, uh, iniisip ito. This is always taken into consideration. Uh, pero, minsan, ano tayo, uh, na siguro dala lang ng pagod, dala ng dami ng trabaho. Yung, I, have you found yourself yung gumagawa ka ng test tapos yung item mo, ha, ang hirap nitong item na to, sigurado lahat sila magkakamali. Di ba? Parang, bakit? Ba't ganun yung, <laughs> ba't ganun yung way of thinking natin when we make tests? Okay? Instead, bigyan natin ng opportunity si mga studyante natin para to feel nice about themselves. Yung genuine, syempre, ah, hindi yung binigay mo lang ng libre. Pero genuine, they would want to learn pa about your topic. Ayaw mong, ano, ayaw mong ma-prove na, ah, ang hirap ng subject ko, and then ayaw na nilang aralin. Okay? They will go on, uh, talk to their friends, talk to their children eventually, and tell them, ay, napakahirap ng math na yan. Kaya, kaya maraming, ano, marami di ba ang negative yung, ano, negative yung pagtingin sa math. Uh, kaya, very proud ako sa mga teachers ngayon ng mathematics who, are actually making things or making math uh, fun for a lot of our students. So, congratulations sa mga math teachers. Keep it up po. Next. Last ko na ba yan, Sir Franco? Ayan. Ito yung last ko pala. Uh, teachers are simply extraordinary. Uh, habang ginagawa ko tong Maslow's Hierarchy of Deeds, alam mo yun, yung sa sa likod ng utak ko inisip ko totoo ba to totoo bang ano totoo bang uh, dapat magawa mo muna to before ka mag move on to the next level uh, hindi ako makapaniwala kasi ang dami kong kilalang teachers ayan kayo all 202 of you na nandito sa ano sa webinar natin ngayon kakaiba kayo eh di ba hindi kayo, I'm sure hindi kayo naisip ni, hindi kayo kasama dun sa mga naisip ni, Adri, ni Abraham Maslow. Hindi niya na-consider na yung mga teachers ay kayang ibigay yung sarili nila sa ibang tao kahit hindi pa man napupunan yung mga lower levels na, yung sabi ko, di ba, financial security. Um, marami tayong mga teachers na Hirap na hirap maghanap ng printer. Ayan, it's yung isang araw lang. Yung post ni Sir Franco, sabi niya, parang marami pa nalungkot. Okay? And yet, day in, day out, gumigising tayo. Uh, for our students, we do our best for our students. We want to make them, uh, we want to actually make them reach self-actualization. Kahit tayo mismo, yung lower levels, di pa natin napupunan. So, Saludo po ako sa inyo, dear teachers. You are extraordinary. And speaking of teachers, i-connect na natin to sa education with the sharing naman this afternoon of Sir Franco. Sir Franco. Thank you, Sir Jami. Maraming salamat for providing that much needed context no? and um, foundation for our discussion. Pero, Sir Jami, siguro address lang natin yung couple of things no, na na-mention ng mga teachers. Ang dami! Ang ganda ng discussion, sharing sa loob ng chat natin. Pero by the way, Sir Jambi, gusto ko lang magbigay ng special shout-out sa isa sa viewers po natin today, uh, Teacher Evelyn, who uh, actually encourage um, her students to attend our session today. So, kaya po, oh, Sir Jambi, yes, and dami mo nakikita mga nagpo-post ng kanilang uh, course uh, levels saka kung saan courses sila or ano yung course nila ngayon. Uh, thank you, uh, Teacher Evelyn, no, uh, for uh, for bringing your students here. Hopefully, we get to contribute uh, to your discussion and we get to deepen uh, your students' understanding of uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs and Bloom's uh, taxonomy no, in the context of education. Sir Jambi, couple of things no, na mentioned kanina. The first one is yung cultural dimension ng uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At totoo po yan. Totoo po yan ano, okay? 
Uh, and that's one of the things that we we'll also have to always be worried about. Whenever we use a particular um, theory or uh, framework okay, from other countries, culture will always play a part. No? At kanina nasabi nung nag-share no, si teacher, I think that's teacher Jomar, I think, na yung kanyang professor na nag-conduct ng study, um, saying that the Filipinos value no, uh, belongingness and love. Okay? And bakit po ganun? Okay? Bakit may ganung uh, alteration? Okay? Although, hindi na rin siya, hindi siya talaga, ano, no, um, like, in a generalized sense, no, hindi na pwede sabihin po na lahat ng Filipino are thinking the same way. Okay? Pero, uh, ang explanation talaga dyan, Sir Jambi, no, is sa mga possible explanation dyan, is yung tinatawag nating collective identity. Ang mga Pilipino po ay mas collective ang identity compared sa individual uh, identity no, or individualized identity ng mga Westerners, okay? kung saan po naka-anchor si Maslow. No? So when uh, Ma Maslow actually conceptualized this Maslow um, hierarchy of needs, okay? he was thinking about or he was actually from the position, ang positionality po niya dito ay uh, from a Western perspective, which is individualized yung identity. Okay? For us Filipinos, we are more on collective. That's why sabi nga nung, ano, no, sa study ng professor ni Teacher John Mark, okay? mas lumabas na mataas yung ating... Um, pagkapalaga sa belongingness, okay? yung family, barkada, uh, community. Because again, our self is defined by our community. At totoo yan, Sir Jambi, na napakalakas niyang collective identity na yan sa, sa, ano natin, sa, sa bansa natin. Okay? Uh, second, Sir Jambi, that we also have to take note, yung na-mention din kanina is that may nagsabi kanina na parang out of context na si Maslow. Tama po, no? Precisely why we're talking about Maslow today, in order to contextualize again or recontextualize Maslow in our context. Because the time that uh, Maslow actually wrote no, or conceptualized these uh, concepts, okay, uh, the, the society is not as complex yet. Okay, Sir Jambi, no? uh, wala pa, for example, digital spaces. Okay, hindi pa na nako-consider kung gaano ka-complex yung society natin ngayon. And all of those things will actually factor in. Okay? Even yung needs, okay? Kaya nga, uh, kanina na may sinasabi si Teacher Carol, kanina, Teacher Carol Layog, um, uh, shout out po, no, Kim? Um, is that sabi ni Teacher Carol kanina is that the, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs cannot be taken in a ladderized manner. Hindi siya pwedeng step by step. Although, pag binasa po talaga natin si Maslow, yun yung intention niya. Na dapat, ano ka, level ka, okay? Uh, you get from level 1 to level 2 to level 3 to level 4 until... You get to all of those uh, depreciate, ano, uh, depredation okay, or deficiency needs okay, uh, are met in order for you to self-actualize. Kaya lang, may point din si Sir, si Teacher Carol kay na Sir Jambi. A ano yung point niya doon? Uh, it's because nagbago na rin kasi yung needs natin ngayon. Hindi na siya yung katulad dati na more linear kasi yung needs before. Eh, like you need food, pagkain, uh, bahay. Ngayon, hindi na. You have all sorts of needs and the needs of the people nowadays are so complex and so varied and so different, hindi mo na pwedeng i-box yung mga tao in a particular section. Like, oh, kayo, ito lang yung mga needs nyo. Hindi na pwedeng ganyan, Sir Jambi. Kami, for example, kami pa lang Sir Jambi. Kaibang magkaiba yung needs namin ngayon. Uh, and we have a different way of approaching our needs as well. No? So, yan. Yan, tama si, ano, no? si Teacher Alfred. Yung concept natin ng pakikisama is actually very, very strong. No? Um sa ano sa Philippine society okay Philippine studies and no, a part of Philippine studies anyway maraming salamat sir Jambi so i'll take it from here uh, and i uh, will welcome back sir Jambi no, on part 3 when we talk about how should uh, schools respond to maslow's idea no our hierarchy of needs okay, for the meantime let's talk about um hi maslow's hierarchy of needs in the context of education Okay, so teachers, okay, uh, of course, no, the, the essential question that we would like to answer no, and we'd like to address in this section is how is Maslow's hierarchy of needs applicable to education? How do we fit it in? How do we actually use the concepts of Maslow in order to drive no, um, a more effective learning experience for our students? Kasi yun yung point nun, okay? Bakit natin pag-aaralan si Maslow in the context of education is because we wanted to understand the individuals, okay? Because at, at the very core of it, okay, Education still a human endeavor. Tao pa din ang kausap natin dito sa loob ng edukasyon. And therefore, understanding the person allows you to reach or allow that person or guide that person to reach its maximum or its their, their full potential. Yung sabi nga ni Teacher uh, uh, Manolita Oligo earlier, okay, that um, uh, you'll have to meet where your students are. Okay? Or else, okay, you might, kapag hindi po natin ginawa yun, ano, okay, if we force our students and do not or uh, did not meet them no where they are 
we might be breaking them okay, to a point that they will not be able to respond no, to the learning experience that we have designed for them. Okay? So it's sort of like, ang idea dito is that yung, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs no, allows you to properly design your learning experience okay, so that your students can actually participate in it. Okay? Kasi sa, aminin natin, no, kahit po gano pa tayo... Um, kahit gaano kaganda ang ating uh, ano no, ang ating uh, design or ating learning design okay uh, kapag ang students natin are not mentally emotionally physically at sabi nga kanina even spiritually are not uh, in those um, disposition we will have a hard time engaging them and it's not your fault okay hindi po natin kasalanan hindi hindi niyo po fault you no know? uh, if you've done your lesson plans if you have designed your uh, technology integration hindi niyo po yung problema Kaya lang baka ang problema or ang problem may disconnect dun sa pag-meet pag no, sa kanilang mga primary needs before they can proceed to what you intend them to do in your classes. Yun ang import. Yun yung uh, reason na no, bakit natin siya, pwedeng, uh, paano natin siya pwedeng gamitin or paano pwedeng natin siya i-contextualize sa loob ng edukasyon. Okay, so let's get into that. Okay? So of course, no, na-mention ng Sir Jambi kanina, physiological needs, safety needs, love and belonging, Steam and self-actualization are the, the five levels no, of um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Because let's get into each one of them. Okay? So of course, kapag pinag-usapan natin yung physiological needs, no, okay? so na-mention Sir Jambi, nourishment, sleep, clothing, and shelter. Okay? Kaya lang, ano, interesting din yung point kanina ng teacher um, uh, Jomar. I think teacher, jo teacher Jomar, please do correct me no, kung uh, mali ba yung uh, ano ko sa name mo. Pero isa rin sa na-mention is that may concept din of privilege. At tama naman, ano, paano kung wala ka talagang access sa pagkain? Paano yung mga uh, impoverished uh, parts ng ating country? Um, uh, hindi na ba sila makakapag-participate sa edukasyon? Of course, okay, that's going to be a different dimension. No? Okay? That's the reason why ang edukasyon po ay hindi lang tungkulin ng mga guru. That's the reason why education is also a responsibility of the government. Kasi nga, we recognize okay, that education is not just about like telling information or uh, engaging your students in, a, in an assessment. Education is a whole dimension of all parts of your society working together in order to produce a, um, ano, no, uh, an innovative, a critical thinking citizen uh, in the future. So, hindi po talaga yun. Ano, no? Kaya pag yung part po yun. So, uh, did you Jomar, tama ka? Usapin to ng privilege, pero... Um, Ano rin to, no? uh, usapin din to ng um, pag, ano, uh, like uh, um, pushing for um, or asking okay, for a responsible government to to, um, to address okay, these needs of our people. Kasi talagang maapektuhan, maapektuhan ang edukasyon. Okay? So now, this physiological needs is actually very important because it's actually your, the beginning of engagement. Okay? And uh, uh, into the learning process. Okay? You cannot expect, no? your students to engage into your class kung inaantok sila, gutom sila, wala silang bahay, okay? uh, or uh, ano sila, or uh, wala silang uh, mga damit. Okay? So all of those things, no, kapag hindi yun na meet, okay, definitely you will have to expect that your students will not have the proper mindset to actually engage into your lesson. Okay? Alam ko po, marami na rin tayo mga success stories, okay? mga students na despite the the lack of this physiological needs no were able to try pero aminin din natin hindi lahat marami pa rin no kasi sa, sa ating mga estudyante na hindi nakakamit sa physiological needs kay are uh, either um, um uh, failed no or fail uh, in our classes or nagda-drop out sila because they have to prioritize kay their physiological needs first kay as sabi nga ni Maslow no uh, kapag hindi nami-meet ang isang particular need they will have to prioritize their highest priority okay so yun yung una natin no kailangan ng mga estudyante natin have that proper conditioning okay? mentally emotionally um um and even spiritually no uh, eh, oh, sorry not spiritually at mamaya pa yun no pero yung mga needs niyan yung mga basic needs niyan dapat nami-meet po natin yan okay so yan ang una natin and of course santo nang gagaling okay do sa ating survival instincts okay we are born, okay? Uh, uh, Evolution-wise, no? Uh, nanggaling na tayo dun sa, sa idea ng uh, our, our instincts are always about to survive, okay? It's about survival. Whenever we are confronted with threats, okay, in our lives, okay, we are all meant to survive. And those things, no? Those physiological thing, uh, needs, no? Are driven by our instincts. And I know, of course, no? Siyempre, hindi naman tayo pwedeng uh, magpaka- 
of course greedy okay ibang pang bagay no yung uh, kinuha mo na lahat okay ng mga ano ng mga ng wealth ng food ng clothing etc no? of course that's a different thing okay pero at the minimum okay dapat na meet natin to okay because again our body will always look for that no for that will to survive no physiologically okay and your students okay will not be able to engage fully in your classes unless they meet those particular needs okay Okay, and of course, uh, isa rin sa mga ano natin dito, um, pag pinag-usapan natin yung physiological needs is that hindi lang ito tungkulin ng mga teachers natin. Okay, so that's one of the things, no? hindi po kayo ang uh, only burdened individual okay, sa pag-meet ng physiological needs ng ating mga sudyante. So papasok na dyan, no? yung, uh, for example, yung ating home, okay? sa bahay pa lang. Okay? So dapat sa bahay pa lang provided na ang mga bagay na ito. Okay? Uh, so dapat meron tayong uh, mer- yung mga students are well provided by their uh, by their parents okay? whether clothing um shelter okay? um or food no hindi naman kailangan in grande no or like um like uh, in a big amount okay? but at the minimum okay? kailangan yung nutrition ng ating mga estudyante are are actually met because again okay? Uh, your students without a proper nutrition, for example, won't actually be able to function well. Okay? Sometimes, kaya meron tayong mga estudyante, hindi talaga sila uh, academically uh, um, um, incompetent. Okay? Sometimes lang talagang their, their physiological body no, or their body cannot respond or cannot process okay, the information because of that need of nutrition. Okay? For example, kung gutom na gutom ka na, alam din natin po yan, ano, kahit tayo po, po no, uh, whenever we are working, we also... Um, sometimes stumble no kapag gutom na tayo okay more so ang ating mga estudyante okay and of course yun sabi ko kanina no hindi lang ito tungkulin ng uh, ng ng bahay no uh, pati ang ating gobyerno okay our government okay has also this equal responsibility to actually need uh, uh, to to meet no this physiolog- physiolog- physiological needs for our students okay kaya nga di ba yung sabi nilang it takes a village to raise a child okay so itong first level pa lang ni Maslow pa lang okay sinasabi na kagad sa atin that education it's not just the sole responsibility of the school okay that education is in a way no a multidimensional uh, ano no um approach no to helping our students okay so hindi po yan school lang no uh, government even the community would actually also have to contribute okay uh, eventually no um to the to the growth no or to the meeting okay the needs of the of the child or the student okay for example yung LGU yung barangay etc no uh, and the immediate community no outside of the home okay yan po yung una natin no okay kaya again okay hindi man siya uh, sabi nga ni ano kanina no um hindi man siya like a ladder okay pero uh, I still believe no and I strongly believe that uh, these things no are not necessarily maybe um the only thing kay pwede siyang uh, may mga exemptions dito okay pero if we can actually meet these physiological needs okay then we will have a better chance of actually engaging our students okay yun yung point doon okay and again okay um that's ano that uh, will uh, elevate no and will actually help us uh, achieve okay, our goals for our students okay second yung safety na safety needs ng ating mga estudyante no students environment okay you also have to realize okay, that your students okay are not just persons of the school hindi lang po sila nasa loob ng paaralan okay una-una no pag tiningnan niyo nga uh, uh, environment ng ating mga estudyante they either one okay? they either uh, at home okay lalo na po ngayon no? sa pandemic nasa loob po sila ng bahay nila okay second yung school okay although ngayon medyo cut off tayo sa school pero still okay um the school um has, has transcended no to uh, or transition okay to a virtual space okay? so meron pa rin tayo no ng representation ng school environment na yan. and of course your community Okay? So, hindi lang, and we'll have to also consider all of these things, okay? And why so? And how so? Okay? Let's, te- um, let's check on, uh, let's ask some questions no, on this environment. Say, for example, uh, in the home environment, okay? We have to ask our, uh, uh, ourselves, no? Do the parents have a working relationship sa loob ng bahay? Okay? Kaya nga po napakahalaga din, for example, ng mga guidance counselors, okay? Because they actually able to facilitate this kind of um, of interviews, of support no, for our students because if a student is ano no or living in a home okay na mayroong problema yung mga parents okay 
ang hirap mag-focus niyan. Okay? Siyempre, ang isipin mo na kagad is that um, safety mo sa bahay or kaya uh, you'll be bothered with the situation at home, etc. No? That's the reason why, again, no, may mga estudyante rin tayo, for example, that are failing to submit requirements okay? because the situation at home is not really uh, ano, no, um, uh, suitable no? for, for learning. Okay? Kaya nga, isa yan sa mga recommendation talaga namin, no? lalo na sa distance learning, dapat na merong uh, proper uh, in, ano, no, or um, the learning environment at home is properly set up or else it's going to be a problem. Okay? Do the parents okay, provide sufficient support and attention to their children? Okay? Or baka neglected po yung ating students? Okay? So yun yung magiging problema. No? Okay? Um, and perhaps okay, um, uh, this pandemic no, have also uh, emphasized that no, how important okay, does, does the parent support okay, uh, to our child, uh, to our students. Okay? Now with the parent support, okay, um, uh, learning no, uh, could actually be elevated in a much more higher ground. No? Uh, of course, we're doing our job as teachers, pero kapag kakampi rin natin yung mga parents no, or kasama natin yung mga parents okay, sa pagtuturo sa ating mga uh, sudyante, it's a much easier job. Okay? And of course, uh, pwede natin tanungin, are there threats uh, present at home like addiction or abusive behavior? Siyempre, nakakabagabag po yan. Ano? At it will definitely disrupt the learning um, experience of our students. Regardless no, kung naka-face-to-face man tayo or naka-online tayo, that speaks, no? uh, that's actually true for both uh, modalities. Okay? So, hindi po wala pong pinipili yan. Ano? Okay? Yan ganyan situation. Okay? So, mamaya pag-uusapan natin, okay? um, how do we now respond to this one? Okay? Of course, community. Okay? Uh, does a student live in a dangerous neighborhood? Okay? Kung ma, for example, yung bang um, neighborhood, um, like uh, it's it's a uh, it's an unsafe place. Like, uh, maraming uh, like hold uppers or kaya crimes, matas ang crime rate, etc. All of those things could actually eventually, no, um, also uh, affect our students. Okay? So you'll have it's again, no, teachers. No, I'm not. We're not discussing this so that we can also solve these things. Okay? But this is all about later. No, yung pag-usapan natin yung your our ability to actually see our students in their own context. Ano yung pinagdadaanan nila so that we can better approach them uh, and we can better help them or guide them and in school. Okay. Of course, uh, some of these things no are uh, beyond our controls. Okay? Because, for example, uh, dangerous neighborhood. So LGU yan or government yan. Okay. Is there an ongoing is there an ongoing conflict? Meron bang war? Okay, meron bang uh, civil war, etc. Yung mga ganung klase ng situations, okay? Nakita natin for example, no yung situations sa ibang bansa like in Syria, okay? Lahat ng mga situation then had disrupted, okay, the learning experience, okay? Or the learning um opportunities of our students. Of course, no. Um uh, ano bang uunahin natin? Tingnan meron nang nag uh, nagkakaroon ng gera. Okay, bombing in our places. Do we actually prioritize learning at that at that time? Of course not. Okay, uh, ang magiging unang priority natin dun, safety talaga ang uunahin natin. Okay, and of course, uh, does the community promote overall safety to its members? Okay, so mer- uh, very strong ba? Okay, uh, yung safety protocols ng ating community. Okay, so all of those no. Again, the emphasis here is not because we're trying to burden new teachers no with more jobs. Okay, these are not the things that you're going have that you'll have to do no. But these are the things that uh, makes us realize okay, that um, education is, again, no, way beyond the four corners of our classroom or even the walls of our school. Okay? Nangyayari po ito sa maraming paraan, maraming di- uh, dimension no, or um, uh, places. Okay? And of course, okay, yung place na kaya natin i-control. Okay? Kung nasaan po tayo. Okay? Of course, kung uh, pinag-uusapan ng education, dapat ang safest place ng ating mga students, okay, um, kung hindi man bahay, okay, ay definitely school. Okay? Because if a student, for example, no, lalo na pag bumalik tayo sa face-to-face setup, they will, have, they will be spending no, a lot of hours in school. Say, for example, 7 to 4 p.m., okay? that's a total of at least um, ano, no, 8 hours to 9 hours of uh, stay in school. Okay? So now, you ask yourselves, okay, is the student safe from bullying? Unang tanong kagad natin yan. Okay? So, meron ba tayong mga protocols for bullying? Okay? Or are we just dismissing the idea? Okay? Lalo na, for example, ngayon, hindi lang siya bullying. Okay? Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin yung paglitaw na or pagpasok na tinatawag natin cyberbullying. Okay? Is the student allowed to express himself um, or herself no? uh, to void, um, void of judgment or discrimination? Okay? So, siyempre, no, magiging problema rin. No? Um, yung uh, katulad yung kanina na yung uh, even our spirituality okay uh, kahit for example yung um, ano natin no yung yung um, uh, issues no or um, talks about gender okay so pwede natin yan dapat ano rin yan no um, 
isa rin yung mga pinopromote natin. Okay? That's the school promote inclusivity, okay? especially on accessibility. Okay? So yung mga bagay na kailangan din natin pag-usapan. Okay? Um, and that, all of those things, no, will eventually lead, no, on the idea of being safe in school. Okay? And um, so that now brings us uh, to the idea that education, no, happens in uh, different places, no, or actually involves different um, um, environments as well, no? So you have your community, home, and school, and all of these environments will have to be uh, considered, no, um, in the holistic, okay? Sabi ka kanina sa comment kanina, no, yung tatawag natin holistic education, okay? Or holistic approach to our students, okay? And um, the next one is on love and belonging, okay? The feeling of belongingness. Na sabi na rin teacher, um, um, ano nito, teacher um, Jambi kanina, no? So, especially that we are Filipinos, okay? We are bound. We are, uh, uh, we have a very collective identity, okay? So, we, like, we will like belonging to a group, okay? That, that's, that gives us a sense of uh, purpose, that gives us a sense of existence, no? Yung existentialism natin, okay? Uh, are usually anchored on, um, on uh, belonging to a group, Okay? Bakit tayo ganun? It's because we are predisposed social beings, okay? Uh, with the need to belong to a group, no? Kahit sa start pala ng evolution natin, no? Mag-start na tayo ng, um, ng uh, culture natin, no? Ng civilizations natin. We are okay, uh, predisposed social beings, okay? We are meant, no? To actually work with other uh, social beings, okay? So, uh, from our, ano, no? Yung wiring ng ating mga utak, no? Ang ating genetics even, okay? Are actually wired, no? To, to, um, to conduct, no? That, um, 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 engagement with other uh, individuals. Okay? And uh, as mentioned by uh, Eleanor uh, Roosevelt, no, sabi nga niya, no, the giving of love and understanding is education in itself. Okay? When we provide love and uh, understanding no, sa loob, ng kon sa konteksto ng edukasyon, we are actually educating right away. Okay? Doon pa lang, no? kapag inisip na kagad natin to inject love okay? in all the things that we do in education, we are educating right away. Okay? So now, um, some questions that we have to think about no? when we think about love and belongingness no? in the context of education. Do teachers need to love teaching to be effective? I'd like to hear your opinions, teachers. Let me know in the chat. No? Just a yes or no uh, or in the comment section. Yes or no. Do you need to love teaching to be effective? I'll give you 30 seconds to do that. Para lang makita natin. Just a yes, no. No need to explain. Okay? Um, makita lang natin no, yung uh, sentiment ng ating um, um, uh, teachers. Okay? Okay. Yan. Meron na ako naman nakita. No? Yes. Okay? Teachers, we can always teach no? um, content or skills. Okay? Uh, even without loving okay, teaching. Okay? Pero to become effective, there is really that dimension of love. Um, I think uh, and I believe no um, what we do as teachers okay, is actually born out of love. Okay? Madami sa mga ginagawa natin bunga ng pagmamahal, okay? Um, because we always go beyond uh, our duties no we always even we even spend no our own resource. Kaya nga minsan it breaks my heart no um, kapag nagbibigay kami ng mga printers or resources sa mga teachers okay? or mga schools kapag meron ako hindi nabibigyan because they would always uh, message me about um, Sir Franco. I'm spending my own money printing modules in the computer shop, and it's um, it's very hard. Okay, that's why we're working twice as hard. Okay, so don't worry. Um, we'll try to provide no as much as we can. Okay, uh, to be able to um to send you love, okay, uh, teachers. No? Okay, how about this one? Do teachers need to love kids or students to be able to um facilitate the learning process? Actually, no. Um, in one of the resources that I, I, I use, no, um, he tried not really love, okay, yung, yung, uh, yung term for this, okay? Our term for this is compassion, okay? We have to have compassion with our students, okay? To see our students as sometimes challenge and suffering. Kailangan ma-realize natin yung idea na yun that our students, okay, at one point or another, okay, um, are, are challenged, no, by, by, by their situations, by their context, etc., okay? And, papasok na rin dito yung idea ng empathy, okay? Empathizing with our students, okay? Because if you are able to empathize with your students, you're able now to design your learning no? uh, process, okay? Around them, okay? Because if you design, okay? Your learning process, no? Separate from their uh, context or from their, from your students, okay? Then there will be a big disconnect. And most probably, no? Your learning design won't actually work. 
or it won't be as effective. Okay? But if you get to empathize with your students, get to actually see what they see, you know, try to see what they see, try to feel what they feel. Um, um, basically, no, yung uh, nitawag nilang ano, um, uh, empathy exercise. Okay? That actually help us, no, um, be uh, in a better position, okay? to actually design learning for our uh, students. Okay? And of course, okay, um, the last maybe la question no, for love is that is it better to learn or love to learn? Okay. So what is the priority natin in education? Okay? Are you going to actually promote um, that, that idea of learning? Okay? Or are you going after the love for learning? Actually, both dapat to, no? Okay. You'll have to, of course, no, uh, guide your students to learn. Okay? But in a long-term perspective, what we actually want is for our students to love to learn. Okay, why? Po? Bakit ganon? Because if they learn, they learn in your class. But after, if uh, even if you're the most engaging, the best teacher ever, no, after they have graduated in your class, okay, that enthusiasm or willingness to learn might also end with you or with that class. But if we actually, you know, uh, guide our students okay, to love to learn, they will be. Uh, learners for life. So, kahit wala na sila sa klase nyo, they will always seek, no, and um, look for, no, or crave for that learning. Love to learn. Mahalin yung pagkatuto. Okay? Kahit wala tayo sinasabi, kahit hindi natin sila pinapwersa or minimessage sa messenger, gustuhin nilang mahalin or, uh, uh, or matuto, no, yun ang gusto natin. Okay? And of course, no, when you design your learning experience, you should also inject no that sense of why or how can I my students no uh, also develop the love to learn in my subject area, okay? And of course, bakit kailangan natin ng pagmamahal sa edukasyon, okay? Para ma develop natin yung tinatawag nating thinking heart. Na hindi lang tayo dapat lagi no uh, intellectuals, because sometimes okay it will become too intellectual, okay? Um, then, tama, no, Teacher Gilbert, no, yung balance natin. It's a thinking heart that we are thinking with the heart, okay? Na very compassionate tayo na lahat ng ituturo natin sa mga estudyante natin will actually be used for the betterment of the society. Kasi for the most cases, uh, yung marami sa mga matatalino yung estudyante natin are actually end up, no, um, um, like abusing okay? their uh, intellectuality. Ayaw natin nun. Gusto natin na we get to produce no students that are, are competent that are uh, ano no are innovative inventive but at the same time with the heart to actually serve their society thinking heart yun yung gusto natin okay the love in education transforms how students learn and how they apply what they learn kasi talaga wala naman talagang sense kung nakapag-produce tayo ng most competent pero saan nila gagamitin okay they become corrupt officials so where does it go Okay? So, thinking heart, no? Yung, uh, yung gusto natin. Bakit gusto natin or nilalagay natin yung pagmamahal sa edukasyon? Or we inject, no? Uh, love in education. STEAM. Second to the last, okay? Sense of individuality, respect for others, accomplishment, and confidence. We have to also make sure that our students, okay, have this individuality, no? Learn to respect others, okay? And become accomplished and confident individuals because that will actually allow them to fully realize themselves. Okay? We can't expect them to be um, uh, men no? of, uh, of, um, of importance or men okay, that contribute to the society okay? or create changes without that confidence no? and okay, accomplishment or um, belief or belief in themselves. Okay? So yun isa, sempre, no? self esteem okay? or steam. Okay? We can actually group that into two um, areas. Okay? So we have uh, when you talk about self esteem no we're talking about accomplishment okay confidence competence and fortitude okay so yun yung mga hahanapin natin no okay so any of these areas should actually be targeted no somehow or so in one way or another in your classes okay that sense of accomplishment okay that's the reason why um siguro no um kahit um kahit pag nabibigay tayo ng mga assessments for example let's not just focus on uh their mistakes okay uh, i-focus natin yung what correct things were you actually able to do. Okay? Para din, again, kahit meron silang hindi nila na, na meet, for example, yung standards, they still get to see, no, um, uh, an accomplished self. Okay? Of course, we will not, like, try to spoil them, okay? Pero, uh, that should give them, no, a little boost of, uh, of, of steam, no? Or self-steam, okay? 
confidence, okay? uh, competence and fortune, ability to actually express themselves. Okay? And we have to also, the way to go about it is that you'll have to make sure that you give opportunities in your classes okay? to, for them to be able to express themselves. Okay? And of course, uh, this other column, importance, acknowledgement, appreciation, and status. Teachers, your feedback, your comments to, your, to their works, no? your simple message okay, would actually go a long way. Okay? So don't like underestimate their simple, uh, simple messages okay, that you're sending to your students because that will actually you know, develop that sense of that I am important. Even though no, yung napakasimple lang na pagtawag sa inyong mga sudyante gamit ang kanilang mga pangalan, okay? or for example, their preferred nicknames, that gives a sense of recognition. Alam ni teacher yung favorite nickname ko. That says a lot already. Okay? Kasi for example, no, kapag nariramdaman ni students na para lang siyang ano, um, generic no, student sa class mo, he won't feel as important. Okay? So let me, let's make ano, no, our students feel that they are important. Okay? Uh, this one I won't be able to discuss no, because um, we're actually um, we're a little bit uh, tight in time. Pero natagad na concept din ito. Okay? This is actually not just related to our students but in a general sense of life. No? Okay? Uh, we're in um, our um, this, ano, no, this uh, dimensions of self-esteem. Okay? Uh, or actually could actually help us realize no, or fully um, actualize ourselves. Okay? So dito, ito yung concept ng ikigai kaya from uh, from a Japanese concept no of the reason for being. Mamaya nga no, pagpunta natin sa self actualization, yun actually yun, okay? Yung reason for being natin, yung actualization natin kina ating sarili, okay? Uh, is uh, about a combination of many. So hindi lang tayo na actualize, okay? Or we are not able to realize ourselves just by accomplishing one thing. Okay? There are so many factors that we we'll have to consider. Say, for example, dito, no, okay? for you to be able to reach that point of self-actualization, look at the complexity of overlapping. You'll have to have what you love. Do what you love. Okay? But at the same time, okay, doing what you're good at. Okay? So, hindi lang sa something that you love, you love. It's also something that you're good at. Okay? Something that you are recognized about. Okay? And something that other people would need. Okay? All of the things, no, itong apat na to, when you actually put, ano, pag nag-overlap po itong apat na to, you have reached your reason for being. Your self-actualization. You have fully realized yourself. Okay? It's a very complex thing. Okay? At uh, huwag po kayo maglala, no, kasi even self-actualization, hindi po yan basta-basta nagagawa sa loob ng classroom natin. Pero, ang reminder sa atin, let's make sure that our students, okay, have the capacity and capabilities no uh while we're at uh, we're, uh, we're there were with us no in in school in order to actually realize themselves okay so lahat ng mga skills okay? lahat ng mga possible um uh, ano no uh, conditions that we can provide them let's provide them so that soon when they go out of the world they have all the possible um uh, as much as they need no uh, possible things that they need to be able to ma uh, realize themselves okay Sige yun yung point doon. Huwag po natin pilitin na magawa itong lahat na sa loob ng high school life nila or grade school life nila. Hindi po talaga natin niya magagawa. Okay? And of course, uh, our students need not to feel and understand their being in the school. Yun po talaga yung point doon. Dapat maintindihan ng mga sudyante natin, bakit ako nasa loob ng classroom? Okay? And that's one thing that we always have to challenge ourselves no, to make our students realize okay, why and what's the purpose of what they're doing. Okay? Kaya nga po ngayon, for example, no, mas nagiging uh, applicable sa mga assessments natin yung tinatawag nilang authentic assessments because by giving authentic assessments to your students, they get as a reason for being or the reason for doing something in your class. Hindi na lang siya ngayon because I'm required. Okay? Hindi na lang siya because I was, uh, no, no, um, I was asked to. Okay? Now, our students are doing something because they see a purpose in it. When they see a purpose in it, okay? In what they're doing, uh, teachers, okay, you will no longer need to like um, bait them with grades, for example, or, or uh, remind them they will do it because they know there's a greater purpose to it. Okay? Uh, and the last one is uh, on self-actualization, craving for self-improvement. Okay? At um, dito sa craving for self-improvement, syempre, no, ang pinag-uusapan natin is that uh, it's no longer just um, 
ang, ang difference ito, yung nabanggit kanina natin no, as, um, sa framework ni Maslow is that there's a big difference between the first four and the last one. Ano yung biggest difference doon? Okay? If we go back to the levels no, uh, of Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, okay? if you notice that most, the first four, okay, are actually extrinsically uh, driven. Pwede sila ma-provide no, from an outside or uh, external um, uh, provisions okay, or external factors. Okay? Pero si self-actualization teachers, hindi po. Nasa loob po yan. Okay? It must be a intrinsic motivation drive no, to actually self-improve or reach its uh, highest potential. Okay? Pero teachers, no, even if intrinsically motivated, no, ang um, self-actualization, hindi po tayo nawawala ng purpose dyan, no? As teachers, as educators, our purpose okay, is to provide that very strong foundation of the first four, okay? In whatever manner it is, no? Kung hindi man po yan sunod-sunod, okay? In the way we understand it. But the point is that we give it to our students, okay? As much as possible. Hindi naman siguro kailangan lahat or 100%, pero as much as we can. We give them these things, okay? So that it will not be unfair for them where they, when they enter the real world. That they have the chance to actually succeed. Of course, no, yung nga sabi natin, we're not going to set up our students to fail. As much as possible, let's set, up, set them up no, for success. Yun yung gusto natin. Okay? We will not be there, okay? Because your students will have to uh, eventually grow, uh, graduate from, uh, from the school, okay? Uh, and self actualization actually happens in the latter part of, your li of their lives, okay? And we'll be actually glad no, when they do. Hindi rin po lahat nakakarating dyan, okay? It's a very complex, very con uh, convoluted, and very, um, um, ano no, um, like, very, very messy uh, undertaking of self-actualization, okay? And, um, so usually, no, ang mga self-actualized people are uh, realistic, independent, analytical, and impulsive, no? So, ito yung mga usually. But again, we can't really box them, no? Because, um, Hindi naman lahat ng uh, self-actualized people are like this, okay? Maybe the the best way to put a self-actualized person is that it's no longer um, the, the reason for being um, of that uh, of a self-actualized person, okay? Or a student, okay? Uh, is that it's now all coming from the inside. Nanggagaling po sa loob, okay? Um, yung kanya mga motivations. That's a self-actualized, no? And self-realized uh, um, self, po, Okay? So, na-transcend na niya yung uh, external factors. Okay? Hindi na siya like, driven lang ng pera, hindi siya driven lang ng external awards, okay? etc. Or praises. Okay? Now, he's actually doing uh, or she's doing no, things because it matters. Okay? And it actually no, uh, contributes to his or her growth. growth no? Yan po ang self-actualization natin. Now, so then, uh, if that's the case, then schools then must cultivate the cravings for self-improvement. Dapat po. Uh, matutunan natin uh, matuto tayo in, um, or tulungan natin sila no um, na mag-crave for that self improvement na patuloy nilang i-improve ang kanilang sarili na hindi sila matapos lang sa okay na okay that i can become better each day no at matutunan kung uh, again uh, and of course now we'll have to give them the skills okay? to actually do this okay? so hindi pwedeng uh, we expect that without even uh, uh, giving them the leverage okay, of the skills that they need to actually do this okay so that's uh, ano, no? uh, our um, um, the context of higher uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the context of education. Let's now um, also discuss some uh, context. No, for example, in the um, context of the COVID nineteen or teaching during the COVID nineteen. No, so ibarin yan, ano? Okay. So for example, um, for the um, for the physiological needs, you might want to ask your students, okay, are your students, families, and teachers safe, secure, and well? Yan ang unang tanong natin sa COVID nineteen pandemic, no. Um, to be able to, for us to actually you know, uh, teach in this uh, situation. Okay? Uh, for um, for your safety, are there financial pressures caused by job loss? Okay? Do students and teachers have access to medical facilities if they need them? Okay? So those kinds of questions no, would actually come into picture. Okay? And um, again, there are different other questions no, that actually we have to consider okay? uh, as we go uh, on top. And Again, same idea pa din. Okay? Ang point lang ulit nito is that there might be different considerations, okay? And there might be different questions to answer, no? But the point here is still, your students, okay, are in its own context, okay? At kailangan natin alamin yun, 
Okay? Saan nang gagaling yung ating estudyante? Ano ang pinagdadaanan niya? Okay? Um, and all of those things no, must actually be considered when you are designing the learning process. Okay? Because that will help you to actually meet your students where they are. Because what's the purpose of our uh, learning process if we are not actually designing it for our students? Okay? And even, for example, no, uh, for the hierarchy of needs, ito nagbago na, no? okay? Ito is mga na-mention ng ating mga teachers kanina, okay? Na even the needs of our students have already changed, no? For example, physiological uh, change, no? Nagbago na because we have to include, for example, ngayon, Wi-Fi, okay? Sino naman ang hindi pa, um, uh, hindi pa essential ngayon, no? for example, ang Wi-Fi or head devices, okay? Uh, so it now goes along with, with the other set of needs that we have, okay? And, um, safety um, will be the same, love and belongingness, team, and self-actualization. So, may mga didagdag lang tayo no? okay? um, when it comes to uh, uh, students' hierarchy of needs. Okay? And of course, dito, um, yung digital space is now taken into account in the 21st century as well. Okay? So, you also have to take into account now, no? sabi nga natin, if we're going to contextualize it okay? in the context of the 21st century, then definitely digital space should be one of the areas where your students okay, are existing and therefore, you'll have to consider, okay? And that's the reason why, bakit tayo nagkakaroon ngayon ng uh, digitalization o kaya uh, learning no, of different tools because we'll have to meet our students where they are and where they are right now in the digital space. So, natuto tayo ng iba't ibang mga tools to be able to meet them. So, you're actually doing great teachers, no? Nat, uh, nag a po tayo sa actual, sa needs ng ating mga uh, students natin, okay? Teacher Nancy, yes po, no? We'll be sharing the presentation, okay, via our website, okay? And we'll also be sharing all our resources as well, okay? And of course, um, now, okay, we go now to uh, the response of education, okay, um, to the mass, to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Pero, okay, teachers now will first um, um, cut it here, okay, and we'll proceed later kasi uh, what we're going to do is now, we're just going to in line, uh, put it in line with Bloom's taxonomy, uh, paano tayo mag-respond no? or as educators and education, how do we respond to Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Okay? And then also, uh, how do we respond or how should we okay? um, recalibrate no? the Bloom's taxonomy in relation to uh, the 21st century setup? So I'll stop for now no? here okay? so that we can proceed to our next session which is on um, on Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so Puputulin muna po natin. Okay, so if you have questions for this one, let me um, answer that in the chat later on. Okay, so Sir Jambi, yon. Okay, so since uh, so since para po makastart na rin, no, si uh, si Sir Jello. Okay, so teachers, okay, we'll proceed later no uh, towards the end no, uh, for our panel discussion before we begin our panel discussion with uh, discussion on response uh, of education to Maslow's hierarchy of need or what should be our response. Okay. For now, for the meantime, let's now first proceed okay, to Bloom's taxonomy. No? Paano naman nagbago? Ano ang Bloom's taxonomy? Paano nagbago ang Bloom's taxonomy in the 21st century? And of course, no, how does uh, education no, responded okay, to the changes okay, brought to Bloom's taxonomy? Okay? Sir Jello and Teacher Pao? Okay. <laughs> Sige. So, uh, ngayon po, we will try to share naman po uh, insights namin. Uh, although, of course, uh, tulad rin po nung disclaimer nila, Sir Franco, is uh, many of that already, baka alam na po natin. Eh. Pero titignan rin po namin, magbibigay po rin tayo ng enlightenment, hopefully, uh, doon sa concepts na... Uh, Binahagi naman on the other end naman po is the blue stocks on them. So I'll start presenting. Sana Thank you, Wengi, Sir Jello. Nakikita naman ba, Miss Pao? Sorry, medyo hindi ko nakikita sa sarili. Wala, ayan na, ayan na. Ayan. Ayan. Okay, so kami naman po ni, ni Miss Pao will uh, be discussing about Bloom's taxonomy, contextualizing in the 21st century. So tulad nung... Uh, format nila, Sir Franco, we will be doing it in this way naman po. So, what is Bloom's taxonomy? And then second, we will uh, be looking into the Bloom's taxonomy in the 21st century. And then third is, uh, we will be looking on how we can apply Bloom's taxonomy in education. And then the last one po will be uh, 
something that uh, yun nga siguro ba may sa open forum yun nung uh, magiging ano namin ni, ni Miss Pau. Pero sisimulan po natin muna sa Bloom Sir Sir Jello, no? Yes po. Hindi yes, lang po. nag-load pa. Ay, hindi pa nag-load. I'm not sure if naka-share ba. Naka-share naman siya so far sa akin yan. Nag-load na ba? Hindi pa rin. Wait lang po ah. That Google lang yung nakita ko eh. <laughs> yeah, baka naman kayang ayusin ni <laughs> Sir Franco para uh, mag-show so ka. Oo. Sir Franco. Yan, try na. Sir Jello, naka- yeah. actually naka-present na siya ngayon. Uh, just um, ano, uh, start the presentation. It's ready in the background. Yan. Ayan po. Okay na po ba? So, Jello, when you start the presentation, it, um, um, yes, nawawala siya. Mukhang, sige, ulitin po natin. <laughs> I-end ko lang po muna sa sharing. Mahirap talaga nung, ano, parang first time, first time, or first time po. <laughs> Yan, sige, ulitin natin. Yan, window, yan. Hopefully, be okay. Yan po, kita na po ba? Uh, Iperpresent ko po ulit. Yan. yan, kita na po. Yes, Sir Jello. Yan, okay. Sige, salamat. Yan, so sim- simula po natin ng uh, ano po ulit ang Bloom's Taxonomy. Okay, so... So, uh, of course, I, I believe our teachers have already known na marami po talagang definition uh, tayong pwede makuha with, in terms of bloom taxonomy. And ito po, abang uh, yun nga po, nagbabasa, nagbabasa-basa rin po. Uh, ito yung nakita ko, uh, Miss Pao, uh, na definition. Na natuwa ko kasi sabi ko, ang ganda naman ng definition na 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 itong binibigay na ito. It's a model that classifies different level of human conditioning in thinking, learning, and understanding. Kasi uh, napakaganda, napaka-importante uh, nung idea yun eh, na makita natin nung cognition, nung pag-aalam ng bata in his learning, in how he thinks, how he will learn, and how he will understand. So it's a model that classifies that. And then the second is a guide to create curriculum and for creating curriculum, assessments, and of course, instructional design. So, alam ko po, uh, madalas na natin ginagawa talaga to na uh, at the end, we always go back to the Bloom's Taxonomy. Diba? Titingnan talaga natin kung ano na sa Bloom's Taxonomy natin para makita ano ba ang uh, dapat nagamitin natin especially if we want our students to go to the higher level no uh kumbaga, the higher order thinking skills so uh from the remembering part naalala nila to understanding to application okay to analysis to evaluate and to create okay pero uh balikan po muna natin dong uh, idea kung sino po ba bakit niya po ba nagumpisa Si, or saan mo ba nag-umpisa si Bloom's Taxonomy? So, si Bloom's Taxonomy po, nag-umpisa po siya kay Benjamin Bloom. And not only Benjamin Bloom, but also uh, some of uh, his uh, friends and his colleagues, mga kasama po niya, na nag-tingin po sila. At isa, ito nung uh, quote na I would like to, to highlight. So, what any person in the world can learn, almost all persons can learn, if provided the cur- appropriate Okay, prior and current conditions of learning. So, from there, they were able to look into okay, the, the different uh, way or of paano nga ba, ano nga ba nung pwede natin iset na condition? Ano nga ba nung pwede natin na-appropriate for them to be able to really learn? So now, nag-formulate po sila ng categories, okay? Uh, uh, in order for them to be able to look into nung educational objectives. And this is what we already know. Ito nung alam na po natin na uh, format ni uh, Benjamin Bloom. The six major categories. So the knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, uh, synthesis, and evaluation. So pag nakita po natin, ito nung 
uh, matagal na na ginagamit po natin. Okay? Pero nagkaroon din po ng changes later on, of course. Para po sa kila uh, Benjamin Bloom, learning should be something that from the easy going to the difficult. So pataas po. Okay? It's uh, kaya pa hierarchy, kung may hierarchy rin po siya. Na a student should start learning first, okay? Afterwards, he will be able to to uh, remember, yan, to memorize, to remember, to hanggang sa apply, hanggang sa evaluate, hanggang sa synthesis. So, tumataas at tumataas ng level. Pero pahirap din ang pahirap yung level. So, ayan po. So, we can uh, look into that na separately. So, the first three, the lower ones, ito po ang lower order thinking skills or the lots, diba? the, the knowledge, the comprehension, the application. While the last three, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, nandun naman po siya sa uh, higher order thinking skills. So, from there po, may kita natin na tinitignan ng progression, okay? the progress of the students from just merely knowing until dumating siya sa punto na, okay, Ma marunong na siya mag-evaluate. But this is, tanda po natin, contextual, contextualizing it, tanda po natin na medyo malayo-layo pa to. It's 1950s. Okay? In-update po siya, ni David, okay, uh, Kath Wall and uh, Lauren Anderson, mga colleagues po, actually, this David is a part of his uh, team during the time, and then si Lauren Anderson naman po is uh, amongst the students already. Okay? Pinalitan nila yung wordings. They changed the wordings into a verb, from nouns to verbs. Okay? So, uh, something very passive. Okay? Kasi para sa kanila, uh, medyo passive yung, ano, yung nouns lang na, na okay, babagay na knowledge, comprehension. So, parang you just okay, accept and accept. Para sa kanila, mas maganda active nung education, active nung learning. And so, when they have that active learning, they will be able to really, okay, grapple. And makikita nila, ano ba na ano naintindihan at naalala ng mga bata. Okay, so you have there the uh, remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And there's a switch. Okay, if you look at it, dati po evaluate, di ba? Evaluation ng pinamataas. And synthesis is lower than that. But for them, they change that. The synthesis becomes now the creation part, the create, and then evaluate is lower. So, nagkaroon po ng up updating on that. Okay? And, we know for a fact that, yun nga po, pagdating sa Bloom's Taxonomy, yan, we have the, this particular um, thing now, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, and evaluating, and creating. So, remembering more of the solid foundations, okay, that, that the students uh, will be able to uh, know, okay, ng mga remembering nila or mga recalling facts nila. So, isa lang maganda na na i-reiterate, hindi dahil remember lang siya, tapos na. It's also a good way, parang stepping stone rin siya, eh, into a higher level of understanding. Okay? So, that's uh, one. And then, understanding, explaining now the course of concepts in their own words. So, kung dati, parang parroting lang siya or memorizing lang or just recalling lang kung ano mga sinasabi, Ngayon sa understanding, kaya na niyang gawin yan in his own words. Okay, so doon na nung uh, may kita natin how influential was okay, the uh, the understanding of the person. Kung na naintindihan ba niya talaga, hindi na lang niya inuulit. Okay, so there's already that own words. Then application, okay, applying, yun na ginagamit na niya ngayon no, information to similar situations or even, okay, looking at the the real world ano nang difference niya so in extend na niya ng beyond okay what he can just know and understand he now is trying to apply it okay afterwards of course analyzing there's a critical thinking already the taking part known uh, and identifying the relationship of things the the why and the how okay how these things work together evaluating so now be able to examine, make judgments, okay, valuable judgment of what you already learned. And then, of course, the last one is the creating, where you are able to demonstrate, to create something new, okay, to build something that is more tangible. 
Okay? Or more conceptual. So, hindi na lang niya inuule pero nakagawa na siya ng something. Okay? From what he have learned. Okay? So, uh, I hope dun sa konting recall po natin on that particular aspect, makita po natin yung uh, at least, okay, saan ba nagsimula? At paano siya nagpro-progress? Because, of course, as what was mentioned a while ago by Sir Franco and um, Sir Jambi, we have to contextualize it. Especially now in this uh, uh, in this um, 21st century. Okay? So, pupunta na po natin yung ilang mga aspeto ng changes dun sa 21st century. And I think, uh, hopefully, Miss Pao can help me out also in explaining one uh, one of uh, all of them if, if, if uh, kung meron po siyang uh, insights. So, Una, of course, we have to consider that uh, one, we are in the 21st century and also uh, nasa ano tayo, digital age na po tayo. Okay? So, eto na nung movement natin. And we cannot but, okay? We cannot but uh, change that. Diba? Nandito na tayo at mas digital na yung mga bata. And nakita ko kanina sa mga comments, sabi nga before, I think it's Ms. Manolita White, before we teach them uh, digital skills, we have to teach them how to be persons. And yes, tama yun kasi sa Maslow, ganun nung ano, yung idea. But we also have to consider that they are already in this particular context. So, paano natin sasabayan? Paano natin pupuntahan at matutulungan yung idea na itong Bloom Saxonomy ay hindi lang para sa aspeto na okay, uh, maiiwan siya in this particular age. Okay? So, one of the things that uh, some learners or some uh, some um, uh, educators is trying to revise the 21st century uh, learners. Uh, I don't know. Uh, revising the Bloom's taxonomy in a way that it fits the profile of the 21st century learners. And dito, makita natin, it's like a wheel. Yan, nakita po natin na tinignan rin yung four types of knowledge. So, so may mga factual knowledge, mga yun, terminologies, details, and everything. Meron din naman yung mga conceptual knowledge where, yun nga, papasok na ng mga relationships o ano nung uh, pagkakaintindi. So, papasok na doon. And then, procedural knowledge. There's the processes and the methods okay, of the theories and problems and how they will go about it. And of course, the metacognitive or metacognition na pumapasok naman ng learning strategies and processes. Okay? So, makita natin dun sa ating wheel, okay, dun sa, sa uh, picture natin of the Bloom's taxonomy, hindi na siya parang hierarchy. Okay? Uh, parang dyan, parang na siyang pie, pero makita natin yung overlapping of the factual, the conceptual, the procedural, and the metacognitive knowledge and this is something that is very true also because if you think about it ang mga changes okay na nangyari in going through uh, the the revision and the uh, uh, contextualizing the blue taxonomy in the 21st century is that okay ayan first is that there is that association of other verbs so hindi na lang po iisang verb siya okay hindi na lang po iisang idea siya na create create lang okay in creation pwede ka na rin uh, mag-design di ba pwede na rin mag-construct pwede na rin mag-assemble pwede na rin formulate so iba na rin po other verbs questions instructions uh, strategies are being part of the bloom's taxonomy so magkakasama na po sila kumbaga hindi na lang siya something that was uh, create, create lang, or evaluate, evaluate lang. So you can contextualize it based okay, on the uh, needs of the particular students or the needs of the particular um, learners. So, ayan po, there is that association of other verbs. So hindi na lang po siya create. Of course, we, we, we still use the remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. Pero pwede na rin po siyang i-associate sa iba. So that's the first one that had happened. The second one is that there is also the different reiteration of the Bloom's taxonomy. So, hindi na lang rin po siya something na, uh, yun nga, parang hierarchy kanina, di ba? Hierarchy. Pero ngayon, 
may mga lear, uh, may mga uh, educators sa tinitingnan nila siya like a pie na equal sila. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na remember remember lang wala mababayan or learn. So some learners or some some uh, educators focuses on that that all of them are equal. Na lahat sila mahalaga. Hindi pwedeng sabihin na eto lang ang mahalaga at yung iba ay hindi. Okay? There's also that cogs of uh, cognitive processes where ang pagtingin naman po is that they are interlocking. Okay? So once you for example uh, develop the uh, creativity if you want to develop the creating uh, skill of the particular student you have to uh, make sure that remembering understanding is being applied okay so hindi na lang po siya uh, isang uh, part na understanding understanding lang okay remembering remembering so they are not exclusive they are intertwined they're interconnected so, hindi na po natin sila maalis. Okay? And the last one, and I think this will be one of the things that uh, Ms. Uh, Powell will, will explore more, is that there is that Bloom's Digital Taxonomy that we try to look into how the different digital tools help in the uh, development or the how the students will be able to reach this particular um levels. So, if you want them to, to remember, ito yung mga pwedeng applications. If you want them to understand, if you want them to apply, ito rin yung mga kailangan nilang or mga application pwedeng makatulong doon. But again, uh, isa sa mga reminder in terms of the, the use of the Bloom's Digital Taxonomy is that, okay, one, we always have to look for the objective. Doon pa rin po tayo babalik at babalik. So, objective. Ano yung pinagmula natin? Objective pa rin. If you want them to create, we will ask them to create using. So, kung mga enabler lang yung mga digital tools. It's still going back to the objective or to the skill that we want them to learn. So, yun nung naging movement. Some of the movements that uh, uh, happening in the 21st century. So, uh, I think Ms. Powell explore that further okay, as she discuss the next part po of the presentation. So, Ms. Pao? Hello, Sir Jello. Thank you for that introduction on uh, Bloom's Taxonomy. Yes, I will try to uh, a bit, no, at least um, to share to our teachers, and I'm sure it's readily available in the internet, but uh, it's good to share with them. Um, how we can clearly apply Bloom's taxonomy now that we are in this uh, digital age. No? So um, I will now share my screen. Thank you so much, Jello. I will now share my screen. And uh, there. Okay. <laughs> Parang first time ko rin, no, Sir Jello. <laughs> first time ko rin kasi talaga mag, ano, <laughs> mag share. Teka lang po, ha? All right. Okay. Uh, that's the that's the reality mismo pa parang tayo rin ay nag-uumpisa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, yes. Wait lang ha. Ayan. Let me see if uh the screen is actually being presented at this point. Yon. Yan. Nakita na po ba? Yan. Okay. Sige po. Almost All right. Pa. Take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Jello. Okay, just let me know if um, the, the screen is actually clear. So um, now that Sir Jello has already presented um, the different or have recalled no, the Bloom's taxonomy, um, both the old and the new, the revised one, let's try to see how we can clearly um, grasp all of these concepts all together and be able to apply it in... Um, in our plans, in our assessments, in uh, in our learning activities as well. Okay. So as you can see, this is already the revised one. So I'm focusing on the revised Bloom's taxonomy. So we first um, have the lower level, um, the lower levels of thinking, uh, remembering, understanding, and then we have apply. Analyze, evaluate, and create. So as Sir Jello has mentioned a while ago, uh, the, the, the levels have been changed to, from nouns to verbs. 
No? This is for the learners no? to actually know what is expected of them. No? These are, as we all know, verbs are action words. So it's a call to action to our um, learners. No? So uh, in a nutshell, remembering is recognizing and recalling facts. Understand is understanding what the facts actually mean. From these facts, we apply the different rules, concepts, and ideas. And then once we are able to do that, we can now break it down into different um, uh, components. And then from the data that we have, what can we do about it? Now, what does it mean? So that, that is actually judging the value of the information or the, the ideas. There's billion, gazillion um, ideas that we have. But are any of these values of value uh, are any of these facts of value to you no that's that's where evaluate comes in and the topmost tier of higher order thinking skill according to the revised bloom's taxonomy is actually to create no combining parts to make a new whole okay so what are the different types of cognition? This is actually presented a while ago by Sir Jello. But to, to further elaborate, uh, when we talk about factual knowledge, these are just facts and terminologies. Now, basically, facts and terminologies, what you can actually see as your content. Okay? That's fact. Now, now once you have the models, you have the theories, you have the principles, that becomes now conceptual knowledge. No? How are these facts and terminologies relate to each other? No? So that you can, you can clearly see in the slide, it, it talks about the relationships. No? After you are able to look at the different relationships, you are now presented with um, the opportunities to apply um different procedures or specific methodology or process in order for you to do something now and that's what we call procedural knowledge and the last type of knowledge is uh metacognitive knowledge now thinking about your own thinking that's metacognition no um it's the awareness actually of the students of how he actually thinks no how he he is able to process the data that is given uh to them no uh, Bloom's taxonomy, uh, if if really um, applied properly, uh, we can avoid students wanting spoon feeding. No, as teachers, uh, if we stay in that lecture type of um, instruction, we are guilty of spoon feeding our students. And when we are not around, the students cannot anymore do or think for themselves. And we don't want that. No, we are not teaching robots. We are actually um, guiding learners to be able to process information on their own. No, that is our role as teachers. No, um, From mere lecturers or mere experts, we become facilitators. No? of uh, the knowledge. Okay, now, so a while ago, Sir Jello also mentioned about the Bloom's Digital tax Taxonomy. Okay, there are, there are things that I would like to share uh, because these are uh, direct verbs that you can actually use in your plans, uh, especially now that we are in online distance learning. Uh, this Bloom's Digital Taxonomy is actually devised by Andrew Churches. Uh, and deals with the use of technology to facilitate learning. No? Uh, hindi talaga siya yung magtuturo ka kung paano siya gamitin. But basically, these are the tools that can help uh, the students achieve the different levels of thinking, no? of, of cognition as well. Okay? Alright. We must understand... Okay, we must understand that in order to apply that in education, the Bloom's taxonomy, that's theory. No, we have to understand that Bloom's is a learning process. No, it is a learning process. It is um, a hierarchy. Uh, but as Sir Jello also has mentioned a while ago, there are different iterations already. You can see it as cogs. You can see it as um, as pie charts. Uh, but whatever, but whatever um, 
uh, way we, we can think about it, we have to understand what each of it means. Okay? So let me start with remembering. Okay. Look at this image that you can see clearly in your screens. Can you tell me in the chat box, what does this actually mean? Is there anything wrong with uh, the picture that you can see? I'll give you around five seconds. You you try to look at the 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 strip. What is wrong with the with the picture? What's wrong with the picture? Or is there anything wrong with the picture? Let me see. Yeah. Okay. I'll just wait for some more responses. There's quite a delay in the um in the in 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 the in the tip. <clears throat> okay. All right. So again, let's let, let, let's just uh, keep it coming. Okay. What's wrong with the picture? So if it's 25 degrees Celsius in Kalamazoo, Michigan, what would it be in Fahrenheit? Gee, Mr. Alo, I can't answer that because I don't even know how far it is from Kalamazoo to Fahrenheit. Okay. So clearly, okay, what, 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 topic or what topic in science are we actually looking at this no this is actually a science concept but the student is not able to figure out what the teacher would want because she has, she actually doesn't know what fahrenheit refers to and in this case fahrenheit Okay, was referred to by the student as another location. No, as another location. So she cannot, she cannot answer the question. Okay, so what might, uh, what did Mr. Lowe forget or might have skipped? He might have skipped explaining what Fahrenheit means, or simply presenting what Fahrenheit means. No? So, the lowest level of learning in the cognitive domain in Bloom's taxonomy, and typically uh, does not really require any change in behavior, um, it actually involves memorization. But do remember that students have must have knowledge and terminology before they can be expected to understand it. No? There, you must have a common language. Teachers are not only uh, masters of their own subjects. They should be language teachers. Hence, consistency of how you use the language, how you use the concepts is very important. You cannot just accept, uh, for me, for math, no? Uh, during face-to-face, -face, when I ask students to present on the board, I cannot just accept them pointing at the board and saying, uh, this, uh, this is equal to this and this and that. But that doesn't mean anything. They have to be able to use the terms correctly. So please, please do that uh, because that's something that is very essential at this point. Uh, the students primarily does not know the meaning so how can they progress even if this is the lowest level okay this is the lowest level it still is very important now you cannot go on making them apply something if they don't know the meaning so again in this image you would see what would be what would it be in fahrenheit we all know that in this concept celsius and fahrenheit are degrees of temp are, are, are measures of temperature, but for the student, for the student, Fahrenheit is a location. Okay, so there's there's that disconnect. Okay, so it, it, it the, the terminology should be very, very clear. Okay. Now, so what are the verbs that we can actually use when we do um when we do use 
or when we are at the part where we ask the students to remember. Uh, by the way, when we actually do, uh, when Bloom's Taxonomy was created, it's actually for assessment. But over time, uh, practitioners actually use it for the improvement of the curricula, for designing of learning activities, and creating learning objectives. So initially, it's really for assessments. No? So um, it evolved, and now these are, the, these are some of the verbs that we can actually use to make students remember. Okay. So we have define, identify, describe, recognize, tell, explain. This might be very, very um, shallow, but that's it. Because this is lower order thinking skill. But if you don't go here, the student, just like this one in the image, who doesn't know what Fahrenheit means and refer to it as another location, the student cannot really progress. Okay? All right, so these are some things that you can do, as mentioned by Sir Franco. We'll be sharing the presentation to you as well. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. Our next level is understanding. Okay, understand. That's a verb. Okay, that's a verb. So in this picture, okay, there's that question. Okay, the student is reading something. So clearly, we can see that the student can, you know, read words, read words, read facts, okay? But that aha moment, okay, reflected by that uh, light bulb would tell you that that student was able to create, to, to, to understand what is being presented, okay? What is being presented? So now, okay, let us have here. Okay, I've, I've seen this in, um, in one of the chats a while ago. Before we can apply the concept, we must understand it. We know that the next step after, after understanding is applying. But before you can actually apply, the student must be able to understand it. So how do we define that? It's actually constructing meaning from oral, written, and graphic messages through Maybe interpreting, exemplifying, classifying, summarizing, inferring, compa comparing, and explaining. Okay. Yes, again, this is still part of the lower order thinking skill. But we just have to make sure that uh, this is very, very um, clear. Okay. So power verbs. We have to summarize. We have to interpret. Um classify, compare, contrast, infer, relate, we can extract, we can paraphrase, we can cite. So these are the things that, you know, demonstrate understanding. Okay. 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 For a while. Okay. <laughs> Let me see for a while. Okay. So let's move into, okay, understanding. So that's, that's what we actually mean. Okay. Now, let me move on to my next slide. Okay. Okay. Applying. Okay. So in applying. Okay. So again, I, I'm, I'm fond of different cartoons. Okay. So as you can see here, we're a technology company. So the fact that you didn't know how to fill out an online application concerns me. Okay. Apply is that bridge from lower order thinking to higher order thinking. Okay, but still, it's necessary. So as you can see in that cartoon, okay, the applicant, okay, the applicant is not yet being asked of what advanced uh, level use of applications um, can he do, but rather that basic the mere application or the use or the, the uh, filling out of an online application. Okay. That's basic. Okay. Okay. Now, so again, we know that before we can analyze, we have to apply it. So by definition, it refers to the ability to use the learned material in new and concrete situations. In most cases, this can be um, procedural knowledge, okay? So when students actually ask you, for example, in mathematics, um, again, because my background is on math, um, I might be using examples on mathematics. 
um, we have students asking us, teacher, saan namin to gagamitin? Okay, this is the very, okay, the very, um, the start, okay, of where you can actually put the application. Do not teach, do not stop at teaching just how to add, subtract but rather give or provide real world problems that can help students you know apply their knowledge of adding or subtracting or maybe factorization or quadratic equations ang importante meron kang word problems okay and this is sometimes where the students um dito pa lang ha already have difficulty in okay because they cannot translate Practice, you know, they've they've been practicing so practicing solving, but if, when it comes to application to concrete, real life problems, they are not able to do so. Okay, all right. So this is again. So as I've mentioned, it's a carrying out or using a procedure, okay, for executing and implementing. Okay, so the verbs are okay. What we can actually use is solve, change. Relate, they manipulate, they administer, they respond. Okay, because think of it as um think of it as they are uh presented with a specific situation and how do they respond to it? That's application. Okay, that's application of um um in, in the context of uh, the levels of knowledge. All right. Now the next one, so we are gradually moving into the um, higher order thinking scale. Okay, so this is still on, uh, in the first, um, in the even in the original. We still have the analysis part. Okay, so as you can see in the in the picture, you've seen a graph, but in this graph, you are also able to see magnifying glass. No. So we are not just asking students not to, you know, draw graphs, okay, based on the data. But this time, you are now analyzing what does that graph actually mean, okay? So before we can evaluate, we must have analyzed it, you know, with no judgment at all. We will just analyze it, okay? As defined, okay? It's breaking material into constituent parts, determining how the parts relate to one another and to an overall structure or purpose through differentiating, organizing, or attributing. So this is really on analysis. Okay, What are the verbs that we can relate with it? We contrast. We connect. We relate. We devise. Okay, we illustrate, for example, or they differentiate because they are able to 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 analyze the uh, the meaning, okay, of of that data being presented to them. Okay, after which, okay, this is where we go into evaluate. So previously, this is this was the last okay tier in the Bloom's taxonomy, but when we, but when uh, uh, it was revised, okay, it became the second to the last, okay. So evaluate, okay. So as you can clearly see in that image, might be the same, but might be different, be um, treated differently by um, different people, no? Because primarily, okay, primarily when we talk about evaluate, we make judgments based on a criteria, based on a standard, okay? I, will, I, I, I am always guided by the fact that when we talk about or when we talk about evaluate, you, you get it from the root word value. What is the value of it? Prior, you were able to analyze it. You were able to um, to uh, make different interpretation. But when you now evaluate, you make judgment. Is what does the item that I have analyzed of value to me, 
or what does it really mean to our company? Is it something that will um, put premium on, 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 on the services that we offer or not? Okay, or in, in the context of, of, of mathematics, um, whatever they solve, for example, usually in statistics, they are able to make judgments which one is a better option okay, than the other. Okay, So in analyzing, you just compare and contrast, but you don't put value in it. But when you do evaluate, that's when you say this is a better option than the other one. And that goes for even analyzing maybe making decisions in economics or um, analyzing characters in, uh, in language and literature. Okay. So what are the verbs that we can actually do here? We criticize, we judge, we defend, we argue. Okay. You know, it's really healthy when students, you know, present different arguments. If sometimes, no, um, yung sinasabi nila pro productive noise, okay na silang mag-ingay. I'm sure na may miss na ng mga teachers niya. Okay silang mag-ingay. Diba? Okay silang mag-ingay. Um, basta nakita mo na they are actually arguing about different thoughts. No? Okay. They support a specific part or they decide. No, they make decisions. Okay. And ultimately, okay, ultimately, it says here, no, before we can actually create, we must have remembered, understood, applied, analyzed, and evaluated. So, meron talaga siyang hierarchy. No, um, there, are, there are different iterations, but for this presentation, I would like to think that it's really a hierarchy. Uh, it, uh, it, what matters now is how long do you actually spend no, working on the different levels of knowledge in your classes. No? So now that you know what, what value it has to what you're actually doing, you are now ready for this last part, which is to actually create. No? When we do actually create, okay, So as you can see here, maybe it's a motherboard for a laptop, okay? Before it arrived at that certain image, no, there's a lot of things that that person or that man was able to do before he is able to create as big as a laptop, no? So we have there, um, he, has to, he has to know the different parts, no? Different parts, different... Um, um, uh, functions of it, how does it work, um, what is its effect, is uh, this important in the certain model or what fix a certain model, okay? And then that's the time he is able to create something, no? So when we talk about creation, is really putting elements together to form a coherent or functional whole, okay? Reorganizing all the elements uh, that you have, okay? So what are the verbs that you can do? Make students design something. Okay? Ito na yung sinasabi natin eh. Create, di ba? What in, in, uh, in our, um, in our, in real world, no? How can we say that there are advancements? Advancements in technology. Advancements in the sciences. Ano yun? Di ba kapag ka may nabuong bago? Para makabuka ng bago, you're actually do, creating something new. Okay? And that, no, that is recognized as an advancement if you are able to create something new. Okay? So we have to design, you modify, students actually invent something, they write something, no? Um, they pivot an existing tool, no? To work for different kinds. No, so these these are um, uh, the things that we can actually do. No, uh, when we talk about knowledge, it's, it's not just cognitive. No, it actually entails, you know, um, affect the. Uh, it also affects your affective domain and the psychomotor domain as well. Okay, so how do we actually use um, the Bloom's levels of uh, thinking? So how do we um, actually structure the course? Now, when we when we structure the course, that would mean that we are able to um, analyze first what are the different um, uh, knowledge that we want to um, get the students to learn. Um, we know for different parts, saang part dun, 
sila makakarating. So what are the different tasks that you have to do so that they can achieve that certain level? Okay, that's the first one, no? And also the preparation of the learning materials. Usually, if it's um, uh, uh, elementary, siguro flashcards for 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 memorization, for recall, and so on, no? So alam mo kung anong materials yung ipeprepare mo. Now, how quickly to introduce new concepts? Okay, so if the students, for example, you 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 presented the lesson and they were able to recall, they were able to identify. Um, the facts and the terminologies, then you can move on to the next level. Don't, don't, um, don't dilly-dally. Okay? Kung kailangan nyo nang mag-move kasi nag-show na sila ng certain level of competence, go ahead, move. Okay? Hindi kayo pinipigilan. Bakit? Because it's the students, uh, your knowledge of the students' um, progress is key in making sure that you are not spending too much time on things that they already know and not being able to spend time on things they should still be able to know. Okay? So, you as fast, kung nakita nyo na na master na nila, okay na, move on na. No? But if you can see that if you've asked a question on application, that will tell you, oh wait, slow down ako. Okay? Kasi hindi pa nila gets, hindi pa nila grasp yung concept. Okay, so the question now is, when do you reinforce the concept? Okay, when do you reinforce the concepts? Nagpa-apply ka, hindi nila nakuha. Pwedeng mag magpa-question ka pa ulit na isang application, hindi pa rin nila nakuha. Balikan mo na ngayon yung unang dalawa. Okay, baka hindi nila nakuha yung concept of, um, for example, in, in uh, ano ba, calculus siguro hindi nila nakuha yung concept of getting the derivative. Okay? Hindi mo siya mamumove to the next level. Eh. So, kailangan mo talaga siyang balikan. It's a, it's a work in progress, no? I think as teachers, we all know this, we must be really be very flexible. Pwede rin namang sobrang bilis nila. O di move on ka na sa next. Okay? Pero ang kailangan is, pakinggan mo sila. You have to watch your students. Okay? And then, how do we assess the concepts? No, so primarily, this is how um, this is how the uh, this is the initial no idea of of Bloom. No, it's really to aid in the assessing of the students. No, so of course, you ask specific questions for that. Kaya nga nauuso pa rin yung item analysis. No, it's very taxing. Sana hindi tayo um, napapagod mag item analyze. Okay, kasi Ikagag, ikagiginhawa nyo po pag na-analyze natin ng maigi kung nasaan ba yung mga bata. Na? Alright. So, that's how we um, actually assess uh, the concepts. Okay? So, um, this is an additional part that I can share with you. Okay? It's actually um, Bloom's Digital Taxonomy. So, you can see here, no, the different um, activities that the students can actually do. So, the power verbs that I've shared with you a while ago, you can match them with a specific application that um, you can actually you can use. So, for example, um, in remembering, you can do bookmarking. Students do copy. Students do highlight. Students search for for basic information that is remembering. Okay. When we understand what are the things that the students can actually do, specific activities. So, ito naman on on the learning part. Then, no learning activities. Um, they can do journal journaling. What did they understand with what they've read? Um, they can tweet, no? Kung gumagamit pa kayo ng social media in your in in your schools, um, they can tag, they can subscribe um, to different um, sites where they can get more information on that. Uh, for application, they can uh, calculate, they can chart, they can edit, they can upload, okay? Um, specific materials for analyzing. What are the things that we can do in this digital age? They can do mind maps, no? Concept maps. Uso na sa atin yan, no? Mind maps, how, how, how it works, no? Um, they can do surveying as well. Uh, interpreting. Even interpreting um, the graphs that they actually created, that's, uh, that's analyzing. Um, validating the information that, that they have. Um, topics on fake news, pwede rin siya. And then evaluating. No? Evaluating, marking. Let them mark, let them assess. No, pwede nga silang kung kunwari um 
you want them to under uh, um, model a specific paper, kung ano may paper, um, ipacheck mo sa kanila yung paper, sila mag-correct. Tapos markan nila. Pwede yun. Diba? Um, Tuwang-tuwa ako before, no, when I was teaching, like, siguro mga six years ago, mathematics, gustong-gusto ko yung, they act as a teacher and they correct kay uh, specific students' works. Hypothetical naman, no? Hindi naman work ng kaklase nila, no? Um, <laughs> pero yung hypothetical, so makikita mo doon, ay, mas strict pa pala ito mag-check kesa sa akin. <laughs> pero nakikita mo doon how they are actually, um, uh progressing no how they understand uh the specific concept they can also test okay if it works or not that you do experimentations um they moderate they moderate bakit like for example yung ginagawa natin nila sir franco ngayon we are actually moderating if we have an external speaker no? or kahit kami kami lang we moderate sessions kasi na, nabibigyan namin ko anong may value Dito ngayon, eh, ano yung pwedeng may value sa teacher, may value sa students, gano'n, and so on. Nakikita mo siya, no? na, na-express, na-express ng mga bata the, yung judgment nila. Pwedeng verbally, pwedeng written, okay? And then, um, creating, creating. And nakikita nyo dyan, that's blogging, they can film their own videos, they can do podcasts, no? Pero wag naman yung sa simula simula pa lang pinag-podcast mo na eh kung hindi pa nila na-explain. <laughs> hindi mo pa na-explain yung gusto mong magawa nila or yung necessary skills. Wag ka muna magpa-podcast. Kasi technically, matrabaho mag-create ng something. Hindi madaling gumawa ng laptop, it takes years. 'Di ba? So ganun din isipin natin pagka gumagawa tayo or nagre-require tayo ng activity sa students natin. It's not easy to create because it requires students to go back to the facts that they know what they understood about it, how they were able to apply it, analyze if it actually works or not, and then make judgment if it can be included in the podcast or not, no? Or mag-direct as well. Okay. Um Clearly, ito, hindi siya masyadong nakikita, pero mas madami pa to in a website. Um, I will just share the link to Sir Franco and you will see this. Um, these are a lot okay, of um, action words that you can, ano ba, action words that you can use in uh, stating your objectives, uh, in making your plans, and designing learning activities. No, kahit kayo mismo, uh, you can use this as um as a guide. Ano bang classing activities yung pwede kong ipagawa sa kanila so that I can tap their their uh, skills in applying or I can tap their skills in analyzing or their their understanding, no? So yeah. Okay, so these are a lot already. Um I I'm sure um this is uh it will take time no pero it comes in handy maganda kasi siya na infographic no na para makita natin mas madali parang cheat sheet siya para madali nating makita o nagpo-progress ba ako hindi lang ba ako puro pa-memorize okay siguro kaya ako sobrang hirap na hirap sa Soxai dati kasi nang memorize lang ako ng dates i was not able to see the value nandun lang ako sa part na yon siguro hindi na ako nakinig sa teacher ko Tinry niya siguro, eh, hindi talaga. Mas nag-focus ako dun sa facts and memorization, no? So, hindi talaga ako nag-move on ako. So, sa studies teacher pa naman si Sir Franco, no? <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, as a, as um before I actually end, no? How can, uh, I would like to um share one more thought on how we can um use Bloom's Taxonomy in, um, the different learning in in doing our learning objectives or in writing our learning objectives number 1 no number 1 um we have to match the course content with the learner needs no kasi remember um kunare addition hindi lang naman yan sa grade school ginagamit yung term na addition nagmo-move nagpo-progress din naman yan so you just have to match your course content with the learner needs Okay, depending on the level as well. The second one is you have to give clear goals for the students to achieve. So, pinadali na ni Revised Blooms, naka-action word na talaga siya. No? And then, the third one is you have to set the correct pace of the course. So, as I've mentioned a while ago, kung nakita nyo na na okay na, tama na. No? Baka mag-enjoy tayo masyado na, ay, ang dami yan, nakukuha talaga nila. Eh, paulit-ulit ka na eh. 
'di ba? So kay, move on na, no? <laughs> move on na, baka mas may kailangan ka pang i-reinforce na ibang level of cognition sa kanila. No? So as you can clearly see, this is not just mere thinking. It requires affective domain. Judging eh, may judging ka na dyan. Siyempre, eh, nagka-cloud na dyan yung, yung values mo, lahat na, di ba? And of course, psychomotor, you create something. Now, you ask them to do something. No? So, um, please remember that Bloom's of Taxonomy is not only for, for cognition per se, but uh, it also affects our different domains. Okay? So, to end, okay, I'd like to end with this quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes, A man's mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions. No? So, kapag ka stinretch mo na yan, di yan babalik. May alam na siya eh. Diba? Unless, of course, may external force, no? May, may trauma na mamasa sa kanya. But, but basically, if we try to stretch our students' brains and minds, they will just keep stretching and stretching. And yun yung pinakagusto natin. Dumating sila sa level na yun. Na minsan nga, hindi mo na, na, hindi mo na namamalayan. Hindi mo na sila mahabol. No? Kasi iba na talaga sila mag-isip. No? Ako, as a teacher, I would always love hearing new ways by which the students can actually present their solutions. So parang, ay, oo nga, no? pwede pala yun. Never, never ko pa nagawa yun. Uy, ang galing nakita niya. ba? Diba? That is a mark that the student is actually able to apply the concept already on, on different ways that we actually even haven't seen before. Yon. So um, that's um, that's that's basically what Bloom's taxonomy is um, all about and how we can actually do it in education. So I hope you were able to uh, pick something up. Uh, something new, no, that we can um, use as our guide. Sir Franco? Yeah, maraming maraming salamat, Teacher Pao. No? Napakasiksik na teachers. Okay, don't worry, we will be sharing the presentation, both of the presentations, no, uh, to all of you uh, via our, our page, no. Um, by the way, no, bigyan ko lang ng context yung mga teachers natin bakit kailangan kong patuloy yung presentation ko kanina because Sir Jello had to present already because it's uh, his daughter's birthday celebration today. So, kailangan na po niyang umalis, no? So, kay, kailangan ko na ikat muna so that I could proceed. Pero, teachers, let me also finish uh, the, the presentation I gave you kanina. Uh, teacher, pa, ano lang to, very quick lang to, uh, before we have our panel discussion, okay? To te the teachers, na mention na ni Teacher Pao uh, how uh, we adjusted, no? The Bloom's Taxonomy um, in the um, 21st century talk context. Ito naman, how do, should we respond, no? How should education respond to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in our context of the 21st century. So let me just very quickly go over these teachers, no? Para lang mabigyan din natin ng context, no? Okay? So unang-una -una is that uh, the first thing that uh, schools should do is uh, to promote the holistic learning approach, okay? Uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of uh, needs, no, uh, tells us, or tell, uh, tell us, no, that um, our students are not just one dimension, okay? So we'll have to always um, take care of their mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and all other aspects of their growth, okay? Second, uh, strengthen the home-school partnerships. We also realize, okay, that um, learning occurs, okay, not only in the school, okay, so it should be uh, a strong collaboration between the school and uh, at home, no? And the parents should also be very involved in the learning process of their kids, okay, or their sons and daughters, okay? And this one, cultivate the love of learning. I already mentioned this earlier. Okay, that's um, uh, of course. Now we begin with uh, uh, teaching them how to learn. Okay, um, knowing how to learn. Okay, and eventually loving learning in itself. Okay, so that they become lifelong learners. Okay, and uh, of course uh, to also increase uh, con confidence uh, among our students and uh, self esteem. Uh, to increase student voice and choice. Okay, always ask yourselves. Okay, uh, whenever you design something for your students. Okay. Are your students involved in the design? Okay. But I think that's the most fundamental question we can ask ourselves, okay, whenever we design instructions for our students, okay? Uh, and of course, include the uh, digital infrastructure, something that we have to also really consider now, especially we're going back to um, um, to uh, a face-to-face, -face, okay? Um, I think there's a need, no, for our schools, okay, 
to be suited with digital infrastructure so that our students can remain connected um, online in the digital space. Okay? Kasi sayang yung mga natutunan natin sa pandemic kung hindi natin siya magagamit pagbalik natin ng face-to-face. -face, okay? And of course, uh, employment of progressive approaches to designing learning. Let's not forget that we cannot produce learning. We can only design them. And let's use all the progressive ones that uh, promotes that kind of, um, of new uh, uh, um, view uh, to our students. Okay? And also in consideration of 21st century context, such as, for example, design thinking, PBL, um, authentic assessments, okay? visible thinking routines, okay? etc., among others. Okay? And of course... Huwag natin kakalimutan, okay? Take care of teachers' needs as well. Huwag natin kakalimutan that, um, ano no, siguro, lalo na po sa mga administrators natin dito sa, sa uh, session natin for today, uh, let us also make sure that our teachers, okay, are also fully equipped given the opportunity to self-actualize, okay? So, kung meron po sila mga kailangan na kanilang mga physiological needs, safety needs, um, yung kanilang ano, no, uh, loving and belongingness needs. Okay? Lahat po da sana yan. No? Um, and even the STEAM uh, needs ng ating mga teachers ay ma-meet natin because if we have uh, teachers that have self-actualized no, and actually um, reach the, the, the highest level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, then we can only expect a better education okay? because this, the, our, our teachers remains to be our frontliners in education. Okay? So that's how I think our uh, no, no, um, our schools, okay, our education should respond okay, to the 21st century context of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And of course, let me just also like uh, like um, um, Sir uh, Teacher Pao would like also like to lead, um, end no, our session okay, with this quotation: "One can choose to go back to safety or forward to uh, towards growth." No, uh, and growth according to Maslow must be chosen again and again. So it must be a conscious. Okay, and continuous uh, ano, um, aspiration to actually grow and uh, improve all throughout. Okay? Uh, it's never going to be a single destination. Okay? We are always on a constant growth all throughout our lives. Okay? So yun, maraming maraming salamat po um, sa pakikinig at sa pagdalo sa amin or pagsama sa amin ngayong araw na ito. Teacher Pao, um, I think teacher Pao is already also on no, the time. It's okay. Um, okay teacher Pao yeah. also has a commitment. Okay. okay. <laughs> Teachers, if you have questions or concerns, you can um, send that to us uh, in the chat right now. Okay. Uh, so we could address that. Uh, while uh, we show you no, um, uh, some, um, what do you call this? Some, some announcements. Okay. So you can send us your questions and we'll talk about that later on. Okay. So again, teachers, maraming, maraming salamat po. Pero again, don't forget. That we have um, uh, our uh, next two sessions next week. Okay? This will be on hybrid learning post pandemic scenario. Okay? And uh, this will be taken care of by uh, uh, Sir Angelo uh, Uy, okay? uh, a principal. Okay? So let's see and um, I don't know, um, view what exactly is um, going to happen in the post pandemic situation. Okay? Uh, because that's going to really matter. You know, how, what adjustments are we going to create? Okay? And of course, on next Saturday, uh, we hope to also see you again. Okay, we'll be talking about uh, digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation in education. Okay, so hope to uh, all see you again back on Saturday. Okay, so teachers, uh, again, if you have questions, uh, please post that in the chat while you're at it. Okay, uh, here's your uh, evaluation link. Please um, check if it actually works. Okay, um, and if um, you can access the evaluation link. Okay? I teacher pa for a while, no? I think there's a problem with our form. Okay, for a while, teachers. Wulang pa yata yung speakers. We just uh, check on the teachers. Again, while we're waiting no, for me to correct the form, teachers, please um, do give us your questions or concerns yeah. or anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me just... Uh, Ayan, ito, I have a question. Sige, while you're doing that, I, I, I picked up a question from Sir John Carlo de Guzman. Paano po kaya natin mababalance yung fairness and being considerate sa mga students since may mga student na privilege talaga at may kinakapos rin? Okay. So basically ako, oh, my take on this, no? 
um, you also have to understand where the students are at. Yun lang naman yun eh, sisimulan mo sa ganun. Um, pwede kasing privilege siya physically, pwede siyang privilege cognitively. Iba-iba rin kasi yung privilege na meron sila. So, as teachers, dito kasi pumapasok yung um, differentiation in learning. Uh, if the teachers are actually able to prepare activities for for each kind, no? Each kind of learner. Kaya talaga mahirap maging, maging teacher, no? Kasi hindi siya, ano eh, hindi, hindi ikaw yung, hindi sa'yo mag-a-adjust, kundi ikaw yung mag-a-adjust kung ano yung, kung sino yung client mo. Diba? So, um, for example, diba, cellphone. Cellphone, bumili ka ng cellphone, hindi ka marunong, ikaw mag adjust aralin mo siya, ganun, diba? Pero hindi mag adjust yung cellphone para sa'yo. Pero, Pero tayo as as teachers no if we are presented with 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 um different clients mag-a-adjust talaga tayo to to them no what what they can actually do what they cannot do no so syempre isipin na natin kung yung activity din ba natin kung gusto kasi natin siya na whole class activity they siguraduhin natin na activity natin hindi naman sobrang lalamang kung sino man yung nakalalamang parang ganun no pero kung dumating ka na sa point na talagang iba-iba na sila then the, papasok yung DI doon yung differentiated instruction but again you have to know your students that's Totoo. the first thing. Okay. and uh, teachers no let's not like burden our our not one really burden ourselves no but uh, uh it's also a reality no, or a reality check that there are things that we are out uh, out of our control. For example, resources. Okay, hindi naman pwede ibigay, for example, lahat ng resource. For example, walang internet connection. Okay? Um, hindi natin pwede, for example, uh, is shoulder yun. No? Okay? Uh, that's one thing that we can always demand no, from, uh, for example, our government, etc. No? But while we're waiting at it, uh, for it, sorry. Um, let's always consider um, adjusting no, uh, yung ating instruction, in assessment designs, etc. Okay? So, and, pero teacher Pao, no, we're not dismissing that idea. It's really true. Meron talagang inequality, no? Ah, that's true, no? We can't deny na merong inequality sa education. There is, okay? Um, and I don't think we can eradicate, no, uh, inequality in education, okay? Uh, what we can do is to minimize the impact of inequality in education, okay? That we can continue to aspire for a more uh, equitable uh, access to education and to resources, okay, all throughout, okay? Yun. Okay. Pero, again, wag po tayong sasama ang loob, mapuprustrate masyado kasi nakaka-depress po yan if you uh, keep on, uh, ano, on focusing on just that aspect of education. Yeah. Okay. Wala so, teachers, pakicheck po, na mukhang okay na po yung evaluation. Lumabas na yung apat na speakers. <laughs> kasi sa nga, naiyo... Uh, parang yung last speaker pa yung naka-indicate doon, no? okay? Uh, Then, maraming maraming salamat. Pero okay na, no, teacher Pao. Um, tayo na yung yeah, um, apat na speakers. Pakicheck naman, teachers, if the, 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 ano? Maraming salamat, uh, teacher yes, Lailani. Yes, no? actually, yun tala- it's actually the, the point talaga, no? Uh, tama si teacher Lailani Gamban, no? Uh, ang point talaga ng ating ng discussion today is for us to actually go back to the basics. Okay? Um, let's, re- let's refresh ourselves because sa sobrang dami na nangyari and sa sobrang tagal na ng ano, or uh, ang dami ng uh, things that we have to consider, sometimes we forget the most fundamental things okay? uh, to anchor ourselves. Okay? And uh, we hope no, that this session okay, actually allows you to go back to the fundamentals, to the basics, okay? and allow us to anchor on these concepts no, so that it could um, give us more um i don't know flexibility and also opportunity to to move forward yeah okay <laughs> yeah and so uh again the comment teachers marami salamat no thank you for for your ano for your comments and your uh, ano um um uh phrases na sa ating chat okay so teachers uh if there are no more questions or concerns um and uh, ano no at nag-work naman yung ating um evaluation okay uh, will now be goodbye. Pasensya na po kayo kung nag-overtime tayo, but I hope that the overtime is worth your time, okay? And we'll see you again on Thursday, okay? So maraming maraming salamat po, teachers. Thank you. Thank you, teachers.